Hello. Everyone say hello quick. Oh, oh hi. hi. Hello quick. You took too long. You ruined it. Hello. So. Wait, no. We got something good this time. Yeah, we're all reeling from the fact that Batwoman is no longer with us. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll be resurrected, though. January, right? Okay. That's the earliest possibility. Wait, it's probably way later than that. In the universe, Ruby Rose, is, Maybe. Ruby Rose's uh, Kate Kane will no longer be in the show, so I doubt they'll kill her, but she's gone. Yeah, oh, I'm curious. Yeah. But what if, right? Crazy scenario here. We do an Elseworlds episode where we watch something that's not actually terrible. No. Um, what? So, a good show. There's a show that's getting a, another season in. I think 8th of October, I think they're doing it. I don't remember. Either way, we gotta hurry up and get this season watched but ahead of time to know if it ruins it or if it builds on it or if it has nothing to do with it at all. And our wonderful cast today, uh, I, I may as well make it make it clear, I've seen it and I love it a lot. Fringy's seen it and I believe likes it a lot. I'm not, I don't know. I, don't know. I do really love it. All right, there you go. Uh, Metal's seen all of it. You you thought it was all right, mm -hmm. didn't you? You thought it was all right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Right. Rags has seen... So. Up to episode six. I've seen the first six. sixth episode, and it's pretty stellar. And Theo and Jay have like, seen Zeha, as they say in France. I've not seen it, but I hate it. <laughs> so we got a, we got <laughs> a wonderful selection no, here. I've not seen it, and I love it. Oh my god! Well, so see, perfectly balanced. You're as, supposed to like. You're not whole... supposed to hate things. Mm. If this works out, it should work as like a companion piece. Like if someone was like, "I'm gonna go, I'm gonna watch the season." And they were like, I want to talk about it with somebody, but I have no friends. And then it's like, hey, you could watch this video after seeing episode one and be like, oh, I can listen to people talking about it, see what I might have missed. And it could be fun, it could be not. For all I know, this video never even is. And so, yeah, that's, that's about it. So, is, uh, is everyone ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh my god. Netflix logo. Oh, that's a bad sign. Hmm. It's true. No live organism can continue to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House. And whatever walked there, walked alone. Are you awake, Luke? Because Nellie's awake. But that's not me. Oh, her again? You remember what we talked about before? About our dreams? They can spill. But kids' dreams are special. They're like... An ocean. An ocean. That's right. Man, is that blue? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the Daredevil title sequence. Oh, this is pretty similar. <clears throat> it's fucking perfect for tone setting, especially after that. And then I looked up at the ceiling, and there he was, hanging there. I mean, if you actually saw your husband hanging upside down over your bed, you've seen more than I ever have. I've never seen a ghost. Look, your dad. I'm sorry. Uh, she just stares at me. Those are cool stairs. Yeah. yeah. Bring it back, man. It's a style that needs to make a comeback. I got it. Or a pony. If there's a pony in there, it's dead. Where's the freaking key? Don't say that word. You say it. <laughs> Can he just use that big hammer? I want to see what's in there, too. Let's go see if Daddy has any more keys. Shockingly good Daddy, actors. we need more keys! Mm -hmm. They're very good. Like, suspiciously good acting. Yeah? You working? That's right, Cheryl. Something else you want to add? I'll hand... Jeez. So, does this stuff capture the supernatural? <laughs> Don't believe in that word. I'm talking about the word itself. It's natural phenomena that we understand, and then there's natural phenomena that we don't. Once we understood what it was, well, it was just natural. I prefer preternatural. So does it capture that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who are you? What do you do? What's that about? I'm just kind of a germaphobe. 
I have to work tomorrow. Uh, was it something I said? No, we just did what we came here to do, yeah? Hi. <laughs> Nell called me today. Uh, we still haven't talked since LA. Theo. No, I'm just waiting for an apology. Luke will show up when he needs money. What if he doesn't? Oh my god. Jeez. Uh, another Monday, am I right? <laughs> Where are you? I'm at home. I'll see. I'll see you there tomorrow. I love you, Daddy. Are you? I'm fine. I'm sorry to wake you. Closest and your sister needs you. I'm not even. I'll see you there. I'll meet you there. I'm leaving at home right now. <gasps> now he's in the red room. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a stop sign there until recently, yes? A four way stop without a sign is bound to have a few near misses. It was only drizzling last night, and I even got a few drips. You might want to get that looked at. Water damage is no joke. A ghost can be a lot of things. A memory, a daydream, a secret, grief, anger, guilt. Most times, they're just what we want to see. Why would I want to see that? Because it's better than never seeing him again. Most times, a ghost is a wish. The fuck, Steve? What's going on? My brother just raped the family is what's going on. Hang on. I, I sent you guys the manuscript in case you had any objections. I, I object, Steve. Let's calm down a bit. You be calm, Lee. It's not your name in here. He said it was haunted. Those are his it was words. A wreck. I need to start a real life for my own family. We're your family, Steve. You published this. You know what it costs. <sighs> Something up with Nell. She may show up at the house today. At my house? My dad told her to. I, I didn't get a chance to tell him what's... But I'm sorry, you can just point it at me. The staff hasn't lived on the ground since 1948. My dad found a bunch of stuff in the parlor. Tarot cards and Ouija boards and all that. And you know what those things do, don't you? Science isn't an exact science, you know? The only light is the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the Gospels, young man? He's also familiar with the Talmud, the Tao Te Ching, the Torah, the Quran, Greek mythology. Because there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. Than are dreamt of in your philosophy. I don't suppose either of you have seen Luke. I assume you tried the treehouse? Very funny, mister. Mom's looking for you. Trying every closet. Never occurs to her you'll be in your treehouse. <laughs> is this the family? Yep. Who's this? Some girl I saw by the woods. Where do you get the ideas for these drawings? Hey, Luke. Hey, hey, Steve. Well, uh, this isn't what it looks like. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I know. You just stood there and watched him loot me? What's so damn important now? Yeah, I mean, I said it's about now. She wasn't in LA. She was at the house. She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oof. 
Yeah, consider me hooked, I guess. Jesus. Yeah, I figured the best thing, the <laughs> best way to start talking is probably Jay and Theo go first. Thoughts? Yeah. That's a fucking strong opening episode. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, the hook there for me is um, his worldview is about to go on its head just because of the uh, the explanation he just gave to the woman who thought she'd seen a ghost, that it was um, her seeing what she wanted to see. It was her hallucinating. Mm. And then uh, that's gone now because he just saw the ghost before he knew she was dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before he certainly before he'd accepted it, he thought it was nonsense. So thumbs up then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's Excellent. Good shit. Free for all. <laughs> Anything <laughs> I don't want to. I adore it. I was uh, once I'd seen that, I was like, yeah. So I need to watch this whole season in like a day. Uh, yeah, I'm the same right now. I need to watch it at all. <laughs> it's it's not soured in memory. That episode is as strong as I remember it. Oh, yeah. it holds up so I well. Deftly so set up everything. Like. <laughs> anything that could be going on very effectively established in that episode so like, like everyone's relationships and yeah uh they put everything. a hell of a lot of work into constantly reaffirming who's who without trying to be obvious for example like cutting from the past to the future selves uh to connect those while also having characters names pop up on screens and obviously just yeah. casual references it's not like every scene opens with hello character i am character and i yeah. am relating mm. to you in this way that was a worry i had when i saw that we're going we're going from very early childhood to well i guess them as adults is that oh mm -hmm. god like I, i've seen these people and heard their names probably like once maybe twice each how am i gonna oh they're doing a fantastic job of making sure i know exactly <laughs> who's who Without, which, which is surprising because yeah, they make you being work really on the nose about it. They make you work to pick up a lot of details. For example, I'm assuming you guys have grasped uh, from the many pieces that that Stephen is not with his wife. Unfortunately, yeah, you get the mm -hmm. they, the they, ring ne they never shot. say it, but you get the ring shot. You get yeah. the past memory mm -hmm. where he's clearly with someone, and, and uh, the fact that he's not now, and the way they talk to each other. And when his dad said, uh, "You need to get to your house." And he's like, he's cut off before he can say, I don't live there right now. Yeah. Uh, it's all really nicely and naturally done. Instead of just having him say, like, Dad, I can't do that. I have broken up with my wife. I no mm. longer sleep in that house. <laughs> <laughs> um, it gets the brain a thinking. I don't, like, I don't see why it would, in that circumstance, it would be bad to have that as explicit exposition because it is a natural thing to say in that circumstance. I don't see why that's something that's improved by having to piece it together. Uh, I would say it's to do with him as a character by the looks of things. Like, it's not something he wants to really be talking about. He's not, mm. you can gather pretty much immediately that he's not forthcoming about everything. Right. Not, not super he's, open. He's the most cynical, yeah. which is probably pretty he's clear. Like, yeah, very. So I was just going to say, like, I don't know if you've, you've gathered, I, I adore the structure, which is episode one is him. Episode two is going to be a different character. This isn't spoilers. The first oh. five episodes are the five children and their POVs. Huh. So we're going to rewind oh, cool. and go from someone else. And obviously the way it works is we get most of the episodes with that particular character. We get a couple of pieces of B-plot from other characters. And it's all delivered to give you maximum reveals here and there. But right now, obviously, we started with what seems to be the most skeptical character. Yeah. He even wrote the book, and yet he doesn't believe in it. If you caught when she says, like, oh, your book's fucking great, he yeah. rolls his eyes. He's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's all bullshit, though. Like, it's, he thinks his parents are nuts, and that mm -hmm. uh, the kids got drawn into it, and that he was, uh, he's kind of disappointed and annoyed. And he wrote yeah. to get, uh, I, I thought it was particularly, the way they try and transition between um, scenes in the past is to, like, connect them they did it with sounds, What's happening right they did now. it with visuals, yeah. then they'll do it with uh, lots of things, and some of them you have to like, figure out exactly why they're connecting, so when he has the flashback of basically being guilted for making the book, he's having it while discussing whether or not he'll make a book uh, or a story for this woman, and in the prior one, he's doing it for money, despite the fact that it's going to cost his relationship potentially with his sister, and she's like, you know, incredibly disappointed yeah. with him. Meanwhile, now... He's not doing it for the money. He's doing it literally to make this person happy. She wants it. So it's like it's uh, it's it's that's why the scenes are connected. That's why we see it, and yeah. yet we get a whole dose of us. Oh, so we wrote a book, and he did it despite the family not appreciating it. It may not cover actually the events. They're just from his perspective. He made loads of money mm -hmm. on it. There's so much is being done all at the same time. It's amazing. Yeah. And then of course no, there's. Uh, I was just gonna say like all the production stuff. So like. Cinematography, acting, sound design. Looks fantastic. Yeah, child actors. 
fucking outstanding. Like I've, I think I've never seen so such great child actors. Like whoever directed that, he he she knew what they were doing. Mm. You can see it all throughout. There's very clear like vision in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Very effectively executed at that. There's so many long shots. Mm -hmm. So many, it's insane. Like, uh, and obviously, when I refer to long shots, I'm not referring to what they call one is. I, I'm just talking about a shot that lasts for ten seconds, and then twenty, and then thirty, yeah. and then ten. It's just like wow, very rare. And uh, loads of actors get to deliver like long performances, mm. um, even if it's just because like we open with him getting a ghost story delivered to him by someone, and he debunks it almost instantly, in a very casual way. Like, it was, it was obviously very clear that he just thinks it's all bullshit, which is why the ending is just so like, oof, this mm. is gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Now what? I was um, sort of like, this is alright, those last couple of minutes were like, oh. Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what do you, what do you you two think of the the spook factor? Too spooky, don't like it. Mm. I'm mm. not a big I'm not big into horror. Um, generally, it affects me more because I'm not used to the. You know, if I watch this shit every day, mm -hmm. I'd be. Yeah, it's it's very effective for me. It's it, I'm finding it very spooky. <laughs> I appreciate how it uses. I guess do they count as jump scares if they come with like as like. A snap of the tension it's been building over a long period of time. So I was actually going to bring that up. Um, I think there was four in the episode. I like mm. I like two of them. I'm iffy on one, and I don't like one. And I was curious if anyone categorizes them in any different way before mm. I sort of do it. I, I got to imagine that the very first one, like just right before the title sequence, is one of the ones that you consider to be good. Yeah. So the reason I think that one's so good is that this. The person who's made this is aware that we've seen a lot of horror, or at least it's likely. Yeah. And so the door being opened when it shouldn't be, that's weird. He closes it and goes off screen and the camera hangs there. And if you've seen Paranormal Activity or whatever else, you'll be just searching, especially for mm -hmm. how long they're showing this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing. There's nothing there to see. Absolutely nothing at all. And he's going to get into bed, which... If that had happened the moment he'd left screen, it wouldn't be a jump scare, but because we're all silent and staring, the act of getting into bed is like a, huh, fuck, okay, yeah, no, that's fine, cool. we're fine. It's Everything's still looking fine. like there's some movement in the back, is there like something covering up, and it's like, no, just go to bed, it's like, oh shit! <laughs> there's a jump scare when the dad uh, is in bed with the mum, and she screams at him, and then it, mm. like, it's very sudden. I'm okay with that one because it's in a nightmare. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the context. And, uh, but the, there's one very soon after that where it hard cuts to him getting his bag and it makes like a boom sound. And it's just like, what? what, what? <laughs> like oh, that was a bit yeah. much. Yeah, like, I actually didn't even realize that as a jump scare, to be honest. If you literally lose the jump scare sound, I think it's fine. I don't know why they yeah. were like, look, a light is turning on. It's like, okay. I don't quite get that one. Mostly I, I strong. Guess, I, guess, I guess right at the end mm -hmm. where uh, Nell... It's like standing right in front of uh, Steve immediately. I guess that's kind of a jump scare, but there's no sound. It just I'm, mo I'm mostly okay apart. with that one because, again, she came up behind him, he turned around. Yeah. It's the same experience yeah. for us. We're just like. No, I'm, I'm fine with it too. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, because they were searching for jump scares, I guess you can categorize that as one. Oh, the other one was when the car alarm, the, the car beeping outside goes off when Steven's looking at the, uh, the, the leak. Yeah. Again, I'm okay with it because that's how he debunks the actual ghost mm. story. Relevant. Yeah. Plot, so. Yeah. yeah. What about when they uh, when they all wake up at two o three? I I didn't actually register that as a jump scare, but I guess it probably was. Well, it, it was spooky. I'm not sure if like I would call because there was like a sudden sound and a sudden motion is basically the yeah. Uh... Yeah. What we got was they show they like hyper focus on a time and then they all react and make a certain motion at the same time. So I don't That's know. Nice if, uh... like, my internal reaction to that was oh geez what the fuck. <laughs> that's when I was like, I guess, properly hooked because that's fucking interesting. Yeah, so that's. Get, uh... <laughs> I don't get what it's implying. Oh well, of course, it's pretty much anything you have questions for. We're going to be going yeah. forward with with different kinds of results. I'm not going to promise everything is perfect or anything, but yeah. uh, you'll be rewarded for having picked anything up. That's the mostly the position I'm in right now. It's like I don't have a huge amount to comment other than like because anything I comment on is just that's probably something coming up. Because mm -hmm. this is very much a setup. Yeah, there isn't really mm -hmm. enough plot in this to be like, you know, the whole, like, from what I've seen so far, this could have, like, the messiest plot ever, and I just wouldn't <laughs> know yet. Yeah, I mean, plot-wise, all we know is one of the kids are acting up, 
and from what we can understand, she's dead uh, already as well. And Steven's plot line is pretty mundane. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. I was visiting someone, now go back home. That's it. But it's all really just setting up the pieces so yeah. that we can... And I think the big thing that all of these characters, even the characters who you've only spent like a minute with, they feel like really well formed and well realized, like even before you've gotten to know them. They do a great job, like just with the way characters are introduced of giving the, like, yeah, they have a lot you of get, text. You get the bare bone. Like, the, it's, it's funny, right? Because obviously I've watched it. Like, you can, you, you get certain things about those people. Mm -hmm. even in those introductions that become just more apparent later on. We're super interested in how everyone yeah. talks about each other casually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tells you a lot really quickly how dismissive or serious they are. And yeah, getting everyone's uh, jobs. Uh, we, we've gotten a couple already and, and just the interactions of those as well. It feels as though in, in the first episode, the main concern you want to get is establishing everything. And it's <laughs> just so well done. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Something I've written down, which I also thought on my first watch through. When you see the father for the first time in the flashback, and you see shit is going down the house, you see him not acting like a fucking retard, which I found super refreshing back when I first watched this, where I was like, he's being quiet, he's just like, oh, be quiet. You can see he actually cares about his family, apparently. He's careful, and apparently something is going down, and they leave the house immediately. They're not just staying there and look for clues or something so as you probably guessed we're getting pieces of uh both timelines that's gonna be yeah uh the goal of the season or at least to us maybe a particular episode um the fact that in the first episode they show us what looks to be the climax of the of the end of the timeline of the past and it's stressful as hell mm. it's just yeah that's pretty genius <laughs> <Well, laughs> he's gonna well, get us stressful moment in the entire episode has got to be um when he was trying to open the door quietly and yeah. he had every noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you see him flinch when he uh, opened up the door, like, click, he's like, ah, loud, damn it. Everything was moving, like, so slowly, but it hung on every shot yeah. of that sequence mm. for so long. Like, the sounds of all of it sound original. Like they recorded the actual sounds all of it was making, like putting the microphone right mm. next to the fucking door handle. <laughs> just like, yeah. I don't know how if you can tell that. So, uh, something that has annoyed me a lot um, with lots of different things, it happened, I want to say, with something good recently. I think it was The Boys. No, it was Dark. There's, there's a couple of things, and Red Letter Media point this out every once in a while. There's loads of stock sounds that you're all probably very aware of, but you need them pointed out. And uh, whenever I hear them, it drives me nuts, because it means that they yeah. grabbed it from um, a bundle of some kind. And I, I think I talked with Fringy about this previously, but something I loved about frictional games is they make all of their own sounds. Feature so it where they, stock, they... stock sounds is what you mean. Yeah, so you know, and this isn't to say that you should never use stock sounds because there are some sounds you just don't know how to make. It's just uh, I like it when everything sounds genuine. And of course, I yeah. for all I know, someone could say like every sound in the Haunting of Hill House is from a stock thing. I'd be like, huh, okay. When when you recognize a sound as like I guess a sound you've heard before, that can be really damaging to immersion. Well, it... It reminds you that it's like, oh, this yeah, is a meta thing. You get, <laughs> this you get pulled a, out yeah. back to, oh, I know this. Yeah. From something oh, else yeah. in a different well, piece of media like to this piece of screen, media right? that I am watching. Yeah, you think yeah. this is a sound effect, not this is an effect that creates sound. That was pretty deep, Rex. <laughs> I'm all about the DPDs. One of the things I thought that was interesting, and I just, like, I, I would hope that I would, I would talk about this, whether or not um, I had seen the show, but the dad said to Nell... Uh, Steven is closest, you go to him, and mm. she ended up with him at the end of the episode. I just thought it was a, mm. th there's a lot of little things about all the different lines. There's a lot mm -hmm. of context to certain events and lines that if you hang on to memories of what having watched these previous episodes, you'll be able to be like, oh fuck, that was actually that? Like, yeah. I really yeah. get the sense that rewatching this would be super rewarding. 
It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so that's episode one. Would everyone like to do episode two? No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. In fact, I'm already. Uh, I'm ready for. It. So wait, hang on. Like someone here said they'd seen hoops, right? No, no. I saw the trailer for hoops. It looked terrible. <laughs> oh right. That's close. You've seen the main character though. Yeah. Yeah. He's voiced by Peter B. Parker. Uh <laughs> Wait. Hold on. That's what you mean, Spider Man. Spider Verse. Spider Man. Where did you drop oh, off? Oh, oh, you mean he's voiced by the guy who plays him? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. I didn't mean he's literally voiced by Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say at the same problem. time, there's only one thing you could have meant, but you still could yeah. have been less vague. <laughs> <laughs> What's vague about saying the name of the it's, character? It's that... so Paul Fringy sitting there with no context is told someone is the voice of Peter B. Parker and something else. It's like, <laughs> I, hmm. what, uh, I guess you mean the voice of that person as he did, which is like, yeah, you could have helped him out. <laughs> no, how will he grow strong if I help him? True. <laughs> 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 Also, that house, cool uh, the house itself is pretty pretty, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. the I entire like show is really pretty. Get a drink yeah, that's gets. true. I just, I like, I like old shit, you know? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. I can, yeah, I can agree with that. As, as a historian, I can agree with that. It's a nice looking house. And there's something very spooky about just a big empty house. You're just like, hmm. Uh-huh. There's a reason it's one of the, it's one of the staples. Yeah. Hello. The, the bigger no. it is, the less homey it feels, you know? Hmm. Are we recording? We have been the whole fucking time. Yeah, recording. all your racism is on record now. It's quick, say come. Uh, I, I, I panic. Um, all right, everyone ready? Mm hmm Yes. Uh, I don't want to go. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> We're going to make mediocre comedies. <laughs> ah. Like Bojack? <laughs> uh. I often think about things I'm picking up and whether or not it should be shared. If it, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, same. Like, <laughs> even, even lines of dialogue. Like, isn't it interesting? It's like, wait, maybe maybe not. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's like, wait, interesting. Hold on, I better pay more attention to this specific <laughs> thing. I actually think this show is really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering if the if the uh, visual of the shifting walls in the opening is significant to the story. I always like looking for symbolism in openings. Netflix has some good openings. I like that. Uh, I like the that openings have become a thing again. People Grandma's are trying dead. really hard with their openings. I know Grandma's dead. Mm. Her last night was bad. She looked different. So I'm not gonna look at her tomorrow, and I don't want to see her in the open castle. The open casket. Before she's ever even in the casket, I'm gonna fix her. That's what I do. So when I'm done, she will look just like she always did, just like you remember her, just like she's supposed to. What a great transition. Mm -hmm. Is that Hill House? No. Which one of the Come thousand here, are you referring to? <laughs> yes. This is our forever house. I designed them and Daddy built them. It just looks like a lot of lines. Will you please have a tea party with me? Everyone keeps saying no. You can play outside until dinner, but when I flash the porch light twice, time to come home. Very grown up and sophisticated. Sophisticated. Ask Leo. You good, Luke? Uh huh. Don't yeah, forget shot. the roll. So Light awesome. flash. Yeah. <laughs> Time to come home. You have any other ideas about that that red door upstairs? Oh, afraid not. Not 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 for that one. Oh, hi. But you're just the cutest little thing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Builds it around this Halloween mask. Old one. Well, we can't just leave them here. Dogs. Mr. Dudley, have you ever seen those dogs? Do you think they'd go after kittens? No dogs on the property. 
Come on, Mom. I told you I wanted to be Daredevil. That's why I got you that. So you can <laughs> decorate it however you want. I don't want to decorate. Can't you just decorate that to look like Devil Man? De or Devil whoever <laughs> means more when you make it yeah I, I find hey that offensive it's almost Halloween. <laughs> i need a costume like we're in the black we have to do better though, right we're doing more than well enough to give a little relief to families who need it it's the most. not relief cheryl it's charity there's some jewelry in here uh, some pictures of mom like you asked On the phone, you said he had insurance? Right. We thought so. I'm sorry, did you say 6000 A month. That's right. Sorry, Cheryl. That's fine. I, I mean, I could still you do something. You pay me back when you're a famous writer. We love you so much. You got this. Weird. Solo account, his name's on the checkbook. Ask him. I'm sure it's nothing. I don't want to seem like... You should let your imagination get the best of you. That's the first step. Imagine the worst thing possible, assume it's true, and go from there. What? I don't even... Why are you banging on the wall? I I I'm not. Hey! Hey, what, what's with the screaming? Did you hear that? What was that? Pipes. The hot water pipes. They're old. It's old. <laughs> it's the middle of the night. She's dead. What, what the fuck do you mean? Who told you this? Dad, call me. Well, he's wrong. She wouldn't call him. Sorry, Cheryl. I told you she was in trouble. I told you to find her. I told you. Wake up. You know how when you take one of your pictures, you capture something forever, just the way it is? Stories do that too. When we die, we turn into stories. And every time someone tells one of those stories, it's like we're still here for them. We're all stories in the end she's alive what she she really is look, Honey, look. i know this lead you to head up there pick up the body and bring her back here why not send her to carlisle they'll do a great job i there. think it's a bad idea too honey honey let someone else do it you need to focus on you she's my sister and luke's Probably high as a kite. Thought he was in rehab. He missed her wedding. We're not gonna let him miss her funeral, too. He has time. But I'm not leaving her in a freezer until Luke gets his shit together. You can do this. Here, come with me. I owe her this. This is too much for anyone. No, fix her. Interesting choice of words. Can I feed the kittens? I don't care how you get here. Just get You're here. taking on too much. You have to get two grown men to a goddamn airport. Get it done. Kittens aren't supposed to be without their mommies. Why? Didn't you let me take care of it or at least say goodbye? Cheryl. We... I don't believe you. Sure. Um... Just, just no matter! Stop it! I wish I'd been part of that conversation. Would you have said you had to go to the woods and put this sick little kitten out of its misery? You let her keep a box of diseased kittens in her bedroom and, and and now she's traumatized this was not our finest hour no doubt i won't lie to you any questions you have are completely normal okay why did she die i'm so excited you're gonna look amazing how 
How lucky for us, a famous author at your wedding. You promised. <laughs> what is it? Nothing, I should be right back and finish up. Hold on! What? Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, I just... I just wanted to make sure that I got to tell her that I was happy. Look at me. You're high. Guess who they called when you ran away last week? She's expecting me to be here. Oh, no, she's not. Nobody is. Here's a hundred. You can shoot up the rest. I don't care. Um. Is everything okay? Everything's perfect. You have a perfect wedding, Nellie. Almost perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. You fixed her. <laughs> Wasn't as, uh, Hooking is the first one. It was very strong. There was like no hooks there, I think. You've got everything in terms of like the frame, if you will, and now yeah. we're filling pieces in everywhere. Uh, yeah. You'll have your bigger questions, and of course we're only inching toward all the answers. While, uh, mm -hmm. of course, this episode being, you strongly should understand Shirley now, as you should understand Stephen. Mm -hmm. Though I think it's pretty interesting that of the five kids, what you should have picked up already about the five of them, we've covered the two least unstable. They've both got, you know, steady careers. They're both pretty reasonable. They both don't really accept the whole ghost thing. Gonna and, end um, with Luke then? Well, so... I thought we were gonna end on Mel. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, she's a lot less stable. She's dead. Yeah, that's like the most <laughs> unstable. To be um, fair, you're not gonna go off that far off the rails when you're dead. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the like, next one in is... In many ways, that's the most stable you can be. I think we've got Theo next, which is... Always weird to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever met one other Theo in my life before, so this is weird. Visually speaking, have you noticed like they're, they're trying to push you in with something with, with Theo? Huh? Oh no. I, sorry, I was going to say, the thing in, on my mind in like a few of the scenes so far is that I felt like I was being visually pushed towards the statues. They're always just in the background, but they're always hmm. very clearly and deliberately in the frame. In regards oh, to that sort of thing, there's stuff that, uh, poss I'm not sure about Rags, I, don't, I have no idea if we talked about it with him, but I know that Fringy Metal and I know something that will be cool for you guys to either figure out or know by the end of the season. And it relates to certain things that could possibly slot in that way. Who knows? Nice, ni <laughs> Good to stay nice yeah. and vague on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm very diplomatic. I gotta, I gotta tread carefully, see? And mm, this is the thing, yeah. um, I wouldn't want to do, like, exclusively praise, so that one is my least favorite out of the character episodes. Hmm. I like Shirley a lot, and I think the episode's great. It's the, the thing is, we're dealing with a really high bar here. Yeah, I was about to say that it's it's one of those situations of, like, when you say least favorite, it's not, <laughs> it's still really good. <laughs> to be critical, I'll start with something easy that I think most people would probably agree on. The, uh, the Beetle CGI is fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's um, actually distracting me from being spooked. I'm like, ooh, that looks wrong. That, that episode annoys me a little bit because of how they do the spooky stuff with like the eyes and like whenever there's a you know, yeah. like the the jumpiness mm. kind of of it. It's an it annoys me. I think the spooks are weak in that episode. Yeah, it's like it's like oh, and I roll my eyes and like that was cheap and dull. The and last kind of annoying. Bringing back the beetle with Nell was. Maybe too much. Girl, right? Like, yeah, yeah, too much. Yeah. Is what like, I want to say. You know, I think it, I'd say that's the thing. Is uh, in this episode, it's like we get it by the end. You know, <laughs> I think, so I I think, got like, yeah. before that. You know, we get it. I think the first time was really good because yeah, that's how a child ends up rather fucked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think that if you had a lip move, maybe even twice, that's enough. Yeah. Just have Shirley like, see very it. Very subtly. And Shirley recognizes what the fuck's going on. And you could even have her be angry and afraid just for the situation having happened. But having the beetle come out in all of its 
ugly CGI glory is. <laughs> same, same color and everything. It's like, okay, if I get it. I mean, the uh, the fact that the the first kitten dies first, and then the other four kittens die except one, which goes fucked up, makes me assume that that's what's going to happen to the five of them. I don't know if it's going to be that literal or not, but that's what mm -hmm. it it's telling me, you know, with its language right now. Mm -hmm. It's like the kittens are a stand for the kids. One of them dies first, and then the other four. Well, uh, three of them die, and then one of them is weird. There's definitely symbolisms there. Yeah, somewhere. Um... After For she sure. finds the scene of her finding out Nell is dead, the following scene is the cat dies. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, so, and that's the thing. It's it's not. Uh, I I think this is this this is probably one of the more overt uh, of the episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that if Stephen was considered the skeptic, Shirley would be the fixer of people. Yep. She seems to be yeah, very they... obsessed with uh, maximizing good feels for everybody mm -hmm. at any cost to herself. That seems to be the yeah. Case. I, I really yeah, really emphasize on the word fix in this episode. Yeah. I think they would have yeah, been better off using more synonyms of fix instead of yeah. repeating fix. I think it's a, like fix four or five, t five times. Of a, it's of a, it's yeah. hard not to notice it after yeah. a while. Again, uh, this is what I consider to be uh, strong. It's just um, I would tweak. I really liked when they did the flashback to six years prior and Steven's looking like relatively disheveled and uh, the, yeah. the idea of paying for anything is daunting to him and she yeah. says, don't worry, when you're famous as a writer, pay me back it's just like ooh, ooh. yeah <laughs> the way ooh. he reacts is the figure just like looking down at it and just slumping yeah he like, even you can tell he tr he wants to try and tell her like it's not worth it but it, she yeah. pushes right through and he's like okay all right mm. uh yeah luke not looking great in these first no. two episodes from the little we know mm -hmm. i would say it's really interesting that all of the flashbacks so far have shown the mother to be pretty damn normal, sane, loving, bubbly, and we know that she's <laughs> considered insane by everybody at this point. Mm. Again, more just like, oh my god, I want those pieces, fill them in, give me. I wonder what, yep. yeah, it's, it's the whole thing of, we know the, the end outcome, and we just want to see how we get there. I kind of empathize with Luke at this point, like, I don't know, I think I would probably break the fuck down if I was in a situation in life where I uh, had seen evidence to make me believe that ghosts are real in a way that I don't understand and I could be in danger at any time from I... ghosts, I would mm -hmm. not deal well. No. Like, if I had actively seen that, yeah, I'd probably end up like Luke, I think. Just really interested in, like, exactly what happened to him, the, where he ended up, like, Well, considering um, Nell is currently dead and she's the only one that we've seen blatantly addressing ghosts, like, mm. already, it makes a lot of sense that she'll be number five, and if you yeah. were descending in order of, like, unstableness, it would be Theo next, and then Luke, and I wonder That's what I was when getting POVs from each of these characters, if things shall change. I was gonna raise that, actually, because now that we're moving out of secure, stable territory, it's especially given the way Theo reacted to getting Luke to her fu Nell's funeral and, and the reaction to him missing it as well when, of course, we find out later that Shell <laughs> barred him from it. Yeah. yeah. Very different perspectives on each other, I guess. Yeah, the picture is still unclear, but you've got two yeah. completed characters. Actually, uh, uh, a visual thing I realized from the first episode with the info, info of the second one, which I didn't pick up on on my last uh, watch through. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, does that just on my end? I, you had like, a really what? fucking mental like distortion on your mic there. Oh, I, oh, I think you're going crazy. Know. You lived yeah. in a spooky house when you were a kid. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess before I move on, the, the very final, I guess it might have been... Obvious. I don't know if it is or not, but the, the blinking light on the model house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, this is a moment where I'm like, am I supposed to say this? I guess I am, because it, it's a light of the episode you just saw, so... Yeah. When I flash the porch light twice, time to come home. That's the rule. Yeah, exactly. Oh, mm. right. I forgot. I, I, I heard that going, oh, yeah, that's going to be very, like... That, you know, that there may be a sight. There may as well be, like, a screen going, this is explicitly <laughs> important. Um... Yeah. And then I can, and then I literally see a porch light blinking, and I'm like, nope, no connections here. <laughs> I must return anything. to my notes. <laughs> I'm not mm. sure. I I would say I, I'm not sure if it was what you said uh, or not, but uh, I had it in my mind that each of the character episodes were going to be the same day playing out, but from each of their different perspectives. But clearly not. I did say that. It. I mean, of course, it's not that strict. If general time, right. yeah, like, you know. 
Because of course, I think it's halfway through Shirley, Shirley's episode. We're at the end of Stevens, so mm -hmm. it's yeah. you could see what they're doing. I, I swear that happened right at the beginning that we got to the end of Stevens. Like it felt like it was I just going on chronologically. Well, so I remember clocking. It was about halfway through that uh, she finds out the kitten died, and that's right after she's on the call with Steven telling her that oh. Nell's dead. So I don't remember much happening before that. <laughs> what have I forgotten? Oh, uh, you're doing all the the funeral stuff. Oh yeah, what's that? Um, really well, and you get some. This is the thing with these episodes: is that it's not exclusively the character. You also get we're filling in scenes with some other people here and there. We're, we're dropping shit all over the place. I swear yeah. to God, so many of the things they're telling you in scenes is just like, oof. Which, is this the kind of thing you watch back and think, how can they be that explicit about it? Kind of, but it's so natural, um, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, Nazis again! Ah! Uh, Netflix oh. short for Nazi. Yes. You're squeezing too tight. Whose hand was I holding? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, con I'll concede she did not need to say that. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> it's almost like they're thinking, would a kid say that? Yeah, I wonder because it's not something we needed at all. It's not yeah, like they think like, we're so stupid we couldn't see a hand. I'm curious about that one because it is just so it, pointless. It says, it, it says something about what she's thinking there because my immediate reaction wouldn't be who was that. It would be what the, where the fuck did they go? <laughs> like, well, yeah. See, if it were I, my if it were my choice, I would just have her looking like she's freaked the fuck out. Yeah, like she's if just I had a hand. Question, yeah, my first question wouldn't be in, in a house where I live with a lot of people. Wouldn't be who. It'll be where they go. It'll be, were they even there? Could that have been anything else? I stayed as quiet as I could, thinking maybe he'd just stay down there. What does Mr. Smiley look like? Just a big smile. Too big. He's always smiling, but he isn't happy. Where does Mr. Smiley live, Kelsey? In the basement? But when I was scared, I would imagine myself building a big wall all around me made of the strongest bricks in the whole world. I knew I'd be safe in there forever. This could be normal. The foster care system isn't the easiest place to grow up. That's always been like one of my super creepy things is kids' drawings of like the shit they yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Always been like, mm -hmm. Trash. Nelly calls it transitions. Every time. I guess it was. Hang on. This is fancy. Forty nine, Claude Riera. Damn. How did you know that? Oh. I don't know why you'd throw a box without opening it. Yeah, that's odd to me. Mm. That's a tough one today. Couldn't get anything from her. She's like a brick wall. I know the type. Huh? What? It's like a telephone. Always with that sound the house. Keep doing that whenever she touches things. That's the other end. Oh, oh right. Then she wears the gloves. Smell. Mm. Not smell. It smells the same in here as the rest of the house. Yeah, there it is. It's a sick bed. How do you know? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I'm doing some crazy. Yes, you're really Luke. What's your favorite kind of pudding? Um, rice? No. It's chocolate, vanilla chocolate. <laughs> you need to tell me things like this, Luke. I am telling you. I love that conversation. I'm Theodora. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like my friends to call me it's Theo. Rice now. Will you call me Theo? I was trying to take ownership of something that doesn't belong just to me. So you're pulling the book? I'll give each of you. 8% of any royalties, and if it sells as well as my publisher thinks Jesus it will, it's... Steve. I'm trying to do the right thing the here, The right Cheryl. thing? Awkward while you pack up for California? Yeah, 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 whatever. This whatever? Money. It's all about the money for you, Steve. We're well aware. Of course it's about the money. I've heard Luke and Nellie's ghost stories. No offense, Nellie. Okay. I've heard you and Steven do your best James Randi impression, where you say how crazy everybody was. I just would rather focus on living my actual life right now. It's blood money, Steve. You're welcome to every red cent. Blood money. Right. Are they doing the
You're not funny, Luke. Little brother was getting into trouble. Wanna let go of his arm? Why are you yelling at him? Because the dumb waiter is not a toy. It can be dangerous. That's all you need to say then. She's scared. What makes you say that? Have you got some kind of like actual touch sense powers? <laughs> I'm almost getting tired of how good the transitions are. <laughs> <laughs> That one was like a change of pace. I like that one. Luke? Trying to take a ride in this elevator? Dumb waiter. This one ride? I know it works. Please, Theo. You hop straight out and you don't tell anyone I did this for you. Okay? Okay. Theo! Theo! <laughs> oh, such a gorgeous shot. Luke? Mm. Yeah. Bring me up, please. Oh, jeez. There's something down here. Does the light... Say oh, jeez. Hello. It's okay, baby. We're right here. Did you rip your shirt? Must have got caught on the door. Sorry, Grammy. Monster! There's a monster! Oh, what the okay. hell were you thinking? Is he okay? Go to your room. I'm the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> you really got my head, girl. It's... Um... No. I'm gonna check the kitchen. Okay. All right? Okay. Okay. We're good. Okay. okay. You don't have to help me. I'll find her. Ugh. Beats the cold shoulder from Shirley. <laughs> To go. I'm sorry. I'm ready. It's okay. Yeah. yeah cool. I want to check your makeup. No, it's fine. You'll be fine. I want to see who's in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Henry. Hey. <laughs> we didn't know you were uh, into bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Can you get my dress? Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> my kids are going to ask me how she died. Don't elaborate. Don't offer information that's not requested. Tell them you're sad, too. And better they ask you than me, because I don't want to have to tell them that I'm fucking pissed at Auntie Nell, who should have known better what this does to a family. They don't believe me. About what? Anything. First they said Abigail's not real. Now they said the basement's not real. It's not in the blueprints. Nobody ever believes me. I believe you. Maybe we can prove it to them. No. I'm sure it's fine. Jump scare. Bless you. No, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize you made house calls. I don't. Normally, I was just out and about and thinking about your case. Give us a shout if you need anything. I'm about to go back to work. Sounds. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please. What are you, um, looking at? And social services, too. Well, I haven't been wrong before, have I? It was a book of secrets that they were trying to hide. How do you figure that? I don't know. I love that you're so brave. <laughs> Honey?
Give me my love. These will help with the cold and the other thing. <laughs> Pretty good at secrets. No hug. You got a couple things wrong in there, by the way. That was really wild stuff, considering that you were asleep for what? Like 99% of it? I'm gonna get my fucking PhD. Somebody down here. Sorry to wake you. Charlie found your checkbook. Hmm? Individual account. I mean, it's, it's just as bad for you as it is for me. You might want to come up with an excuse, though. Secret family. <laughs> you know, something that's going to piss her off less than the truth. Last night at the club, you completely ignored me. Yeah. I found out that a nine year old that I was treating was getting molested by her foster dad. And she buried it so deep, she had to make up a monster just to compartmentalize and cope. Guy folded like a cheap suit the moment he was questioned by the cops, so. Yay. The girl goes back into the system, so it's a Campbell at best. Good job, me. She just needed help, and no one was listening. Come on. <laughs> That was quite a specific blast of visuals there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which bit? Just the, what like she the, saw the from face. the dad grabbing her. Yeah. And uh, does wonders for your imagination. This whole episode does. Her reaction to grabbing Nell is like, oh Jeez. fuck. She's a pretty good actress. Yeah. This episode's interesting as fuck. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't know about you guys, but like Theo just is automatically my favorite character right now. It's like, holy I mean... fuck. It's weird for me to say, but yeah. <laughs> um, like, slam dunk easily, but I guess we'll see if the last two episodes change. Huh? <laughs> oh, just, just... Yeah. <laughs> Evil laughter, yeah. <laughs> and after you see, like, the whole, this, this whole flashback at the end, you're just like, oh, that's why she's so... He doesn't tell us anything, kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. Mindset. Well, yeah, it's such a like you can tell if if there were sort of stat bars for what the what piece of writing is being focused in this show particularly, it's like writing for characters is like twelve mm. out of ten. Yeah, it's they so are so awesome. heavily character based, and just yeah, the amount we've learned about Theo, it was pretty neat. They're not subtle about it having a power, but they are subtle mm. about what exactly it does and how it works and what she gets yeah. from it until. I'd say by the end of the episode, it's mostly clear. Um, but, but I think they go from like a slight focus on the power to like higher focus. Like they do like shots onto the hands at some point. It's like, oh, okay. It's definitely by degrees with yeah. what with the fact that the last instance of it is like the most major severe and traumatic. She uh, gives, she, does, she grabs the kid's hand in the beginning and gives her like this <coughs> almost speech about how to get over the problem and it does yeah. nothing. Like the kid is just like, well, no. And then she mm -hmm. later at one point says she couldn't get anything out of it. And of course the, the thing is, this was like such a deep trauma that it was essentially passed over without her realizing. It's almost like she was given subtext rather than text. So she was just mm -hmm. like figuring out how to deal yeah. with it. Meanwhile, we get an example that's really quick with another kid who she shakes his hand and diagnoses him like immediately she just writes yep. out all the problems and it's done. Mm. This kid's given her some problems. And I don't know if you've noticed, but three's a pattern. Each of the the characters we're exploring, each of them have a ghost story to deal with in their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all different, and they all have different results. And um, I really like it. It's really neat. Remind me of the second one. The granny who's at the foot of his bed, and he can't. Uh, he sees her as like without her hair and without her teeth. All oh, right, yeah, if, yeah, that one <laughs> didn't really play as big a role as far as I remember. Well, the idea with that one is that he's too afraid to see her in uh, in the wake because he pictures yeah. her as being horrifying, and then the it, it's obviously 
uh, running parallel to Shirley, which um, a lot of them are. Because Theo, interestingly, is the middle kid. She's caught between the two skeptical people and the two yeah. major fuck-ups. And you can tell she's, like, super to herself, building up that wall she's talking about. No one's ever asking her, talking to her about anything. It's always to do with one of the other kids. Yeah, and when she tries to, like, reach out, do whatever, like, major moments of punishment and, uh, you know, like, just scolding in general. Um, and a power that would automatically make her not want to touch anybody. But I love how it progresses through the episode of, like, understand exactly what it does. Because um, the at first she's, like, desperately looking for anything for that uh, girl's experience. But once she grabs the sofa, like, fully, it almost mm. looks like for a moment she's trapped inside it. Mm. Yeah, and then with the Nell one, that just makes that even scarier when we've seen that happen already. Mm -hmm. And then with that last one, her reaction to the dad being like terrified of him, it's just like, damn. And mm -hmm. what she saw in Nell must have been so traumatic that she's desperately grabbing onto that girl, basically, just yep. to flood it out. Uh, Anything else? Wonderful work for all of our brains to just picture what mm. the fuck's going on with all of it. Mm -hmm. Theo gives the actual advice uh, to how to talk to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. My kids are gonna ask me how she died. What do I say? You answer the question that's asked. What are you doing to her? I just finished embalming her. It helps her look how we remember her. Tell them you're sad too. I know you're curious. I'm sad. I'm sad too. If they ask why, tell them you don't know. No one knows. That's okay. Why did she die? Like almost word for word. Yeah, it's. Is that, uh, is that how you're supposed to like tell a kid if someone they know is themselves? I'm assuming what Mel was saying was we saw the advice given in episode two, and then we saw in episode three why she gave that advice specific or, yeah. or yeah. that response specifically, and it's all informed by the fact that Theo fucking hates being lied to. Mm -hmm. if, if anything, the connecting sort of theme throughout a lot of her uh, episode is just she just wants to know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, she's holding what seems to be a pretty significant secret. Uh, from Shirley. There's like yeah. valuing it for herself, but only letting people, other people know what she thinks they should know. Yeah. She wants to know well, the truth about everyone else, but is perfectly content for like brick walls all around her. Wasn't Shirley trying to make other people happy at her own expense? Yeah. And it's just sort of the same way, different rules for me and different rules uh, than there are for you. The fact that her job is child support and she is talking about like how she like gets upset just talking about people not being able to, not being seen, heard, or being able to express themselves and stuff. Like it, it just perfectly slots in and it's just like, well, that tells yeah. you a lot about her as a, as a person. Very middle child. And yeah, whenever she's um, praised or congratulated, she always seems really happy in the uh, past scenes mm. for being noticed and stuff. Really good stuff. Yes. Really nice consistency. Uh, when we have the scene in the second episode when Nell's corpse gets stretched out of the thing, you can hear dogs in the background. No, they always uh, say they hear dogs, even though the Dudley guy says there are no dogs. Right, yeah. The, the few times that we ever see the whole family together is usually pretty bad, but there's that one wedding scene that... They find out Theo's gay, and it's all—it's—it's it's just so. Uh, well, maybe by who knows? Uh, it's such a nice little scene. She it's does. A, yeah. It's a like in, in a show levity. that's full tragic yeah. mode. It's just a moment where they're all happy. And yeah, it's, it's natural. It feels real. <laughs> you lot, like, well, I don't know who specifically, but there was laughter just like just ahead of the characters bursting out laughing, laughing, laughing. The. Uh... <laughs> Just because it's an absurd scenario, but then yeah. not really, actually. You must start laughing at you. Oh, don't laugh. <laughs> One of the other collection mm -hmm. bits when they're all telling uh, Stephen there's no fucking way they're taking the money, it's blood money. I really like mm -hmm. his reaction. It's like, uh, he doesn't think he's done anything wrong, but he's getting completely, like, pariahed for it. It's just mm -hmm. it's just good shit, because that, that's all. They're chipping away at all of that kind of story as we oh, go ahead that? as well. Was it, I didn't quite follow. Was um, the guy later with his checkbook? Was he taking the money behind their back? Well, I wouldn't want to confirm anything, but what we know. All right. Okay. So I, I was I wasn't sure if I'd missed something. <clears throat> so I'd say the important detail is when she says, "You know, you need to sort out that account," and then he says, "Like this is about as bad as it is for me as it is for you." Yeah. Right. My my guess from there, considering Theo took the money as well, yeah, took some of the books as well, would be yeah, <clears throat> they accepted the uh. 
blood money, I guess. Why Shell's husband would have, I don't know, but assuming that would be the case. Uh, they describe their uh, their companies in the black, meaning that they're right, breaking yeah. even, right? We're in the black, though. We are, but barely. And Tyson's saying it again, just like last quarter. We're in the black. We have to do better. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he he seemed so very uncomfortable with that. Yeah. yeah, they're very tentatively okay, but it's very clearly mm -hmm. an, an unsteady financial situation. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you guys think about the whole uh, they they no one ever found the basements in all these years? Oh, I mean, the fact that there's a dumb way to go into it's kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they just kind of stuck uh, stuck out to me. But it doesn't appear on any plans. No one wants to know that. They don't want anyone to know this basement exists, except for the dumbwaiter that leads to it. Well, you would think that the dumbwaiter was installed. I don't. I guess I have to check the dates on those in Prohibition. Right. Well, yeah. Prohibition was nineteen twenty through not, like nineteen thirty three. I think is when it ended. Oh, you're saying the, the basement was like the the dumbwaiter could have been installed after. So the dumbwaiters they were invented in the eighteen forties. So I guess it's an electric, uh, you know, how, how it became electric. Yeah, well, so, so the reason yeah, it's not it on the out. plans is because it's a point of it was to yeah. be a secret. Yeah. 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 Um, but it does seem unlikely that it wouldn't have been found by somebody at some point. Yeah, that's well, what I was getting at. That just stuck out to me. It's like, hmm. Yeah, like the hills, you think they would have yeah. known about it until... There was a, there uh, was a dumb way to leading to it, so... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if is the is the show trying to imply that like nobody ever realized the down was there so nobody ever tried is that is that what they're going there are only two for? I guess. On it, like, well, no, of course, but if the dumb waiter is on the lowest level and it can go up by one and then up by another one, you would hit. Then, but but the fact that there's a down yeah. button, you'd think someone would be curious enough to say, hey, does this mm. go down? Yeah. Well, no, because the down button you could what? just assume brings it down from the no, top. No, of course, floor. but once it gets to your yeah. bottom level, you oh, might right, be curious yeah. enough to say, "Hey, let's press yeah. down one more time." All it takes you, you is one person, like in a hurry, mispressing it once. And... True. When it's oh, not it there, goes down. You'd be able to see that there's no space under it. Like you'd see that it's not the bottom of the shaft because you can see through the door. Yeah, you might question that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, ruined. There's not well. I was gonna say there's not much that comes from them discovering that, as far as I know, anyway. It just no, no. It just stuck out to me. It's like it was fun. Spoiler. Yeah. It pretty much just gives us an inroad to mm. a bit more about Theo and about the fact. Fucking, that's never gonna stop being weird. And <laughs> uh, they're not believe. Like, it gives us an inroad to nobody believing Luke and that being something he's, you know, very upset about. I guess. Yeah. Because apparently the Dudleys didn't know about it either. Because mm. they, they were standing there with the dads like, oh, it yeah. must be go down. Yep. It's just weird. I mean, it doesn't really damage the show greatly. It's just uh, I mean, stuck out to me. I guess you'd call it a dumb way to... No. <laughs> the thing about that episode I find fascinating is I'm very curious what, like, receiving all those impressions or emotions and experiences from people whenever you touch them does mm. to a person's sense of individuality. Mm. Sort of. How do you live like that? With gloves on. With gloves on yeah. and being very jaded, which is, I guess, how you get to what yeah. we see. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious if that's going to tie into the, the the actual haunting itself, or if it's just going to be, like, two separate spooky things that have happened. Mm. I would hope that it all ties in together, because, you know, there, there is a, the horror trope of just showing loads of creepy-looking stuff, and then the explanation at the end is, well, there was a ghost! <laughs> well, what I will say is that I I wish I could describe the show as perfect. So prepare for like not everything being as good as you may would hope it to be. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to over overcharge anything. Though I will say unequivocally, episode six is one of the best episodes of TV that ever existed. It's easily top fucking five. Yeah, I'd probably say not that. Bad. From everything that Which I've one? Seen. Sorry, episode uh, six. six. Five okay, five is uh, really good, but six six is uh, oof. Six is kind of insane. But is it too scary, though? Yes. Aww. By the way, this shit, because, like, we obviously, as, as has been seen, we have criticisms for it, but I wish fucking media was about this good for most stuff. How, how nice would that be? Oh, uh, that'd be a good one to live in. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of TV lately. It's all shit compared to this. <laughs> <laughs> to be Not the... about to break down the writer's door over the dumb way of thing. No. I am. <laughs> oh, no. The, the scares in this are good, but like I, for me at least, they're like far from the core appeal well, of it to me. Yeah, that's what, yeah. that's what I would say. Just is way the, more interested in the characters. The characters are phenomenal. The horror is fine. 
I guess, similar right. vein to Silent Hill 2 in that way, but it's, Silent Hill 2 has quite I, a good horror. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to throw too much shade. There's some scares I, I like a lot in this, in terms of execution. So far, yeah. There's nothing in it hugely original. It just feels like the trope's done so well. Mm. I, 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 mm. I like, don't necessarily disagree with that. It is, you yeah, know, I think it's your good. very basic ghost story haunted spooky house premise but it's just executed really what well. i will say is we just got past out of the five characters we're done with the three you would consider to be the non-spooky tisms yeah that's true so maybe who knows what'll happen next I do a fucking eldritch by comparison right luke is the one we've seen the least of so far i think right mm -hmm. yeah so it's unclear what... what makes him interesting at the moment is yeah most most of what we know about him is people talking about him and he's rarely ever there. And what we see of him is not good. That's, so, that's going to be enough for me for the day. No. <sighs> things that I hate what him a here. bitch. Raggleton. All right, give me a second. Let me see if I can in just a second. I need a boogie. All right. Hang on. That was, that was a thought in my brain that's hanging. Ah, uh, no. Thought, come back. <laughs> All right, here's episode four. Come Metal, on. did you just get jump scared? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He even ripped my shirt, and they still didn't bleed me. They don't even believe me about you. Short, sweet, to the point. Well, what's interesting is, um, we'll be like, oh fuck yeah, of course, those random little scenes in the previous three episodes. Now we're going to be mm. getting the bigger picture on this shit. Yeah, hope. I think that it's both and it's enticing for for every character when you see them. You're like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what things are for them. Like, <laughs> okay, go. But these two specifically, Luke and Nell, is like, hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering if we're going to get a focal episode on the dad. If that's what episode six is, that's that's my wonder at the moment. I joined the service. Yeah, I'm thinking it would straighten me out. 2004, my second tour in Iraq, my company secured the ruins of a bombed out hospital in Baghdad. We came across this little Iraqi girl, I mean, she was burnt up, dead. Most folks don't know what happens to eyeballs in a fire. In the right kind of fire, they, uh, they can melt. I mean, that fucked me up pretty bad. Um, anyway, six months later, I'm back in the States, and pretty soon I start seeing that little dead girl's face everywhere. And pretty soon, before I know it, I'm using again. I mean, it's growing out of the goddamn wallpaper, you know? I mean, and she's staring at me. Eyeless, even, I can tell. Yeah. So I grabbed this knitting needle. Seemed like a good idea at the time. So then I'm blind. Thing is, is I still see her. Oh, I can't see anything else. I see her. But, um, I'm here. Two months I've been clean. I leaned on my habit to get rid of that face, and my habit made sure that I never would. That's why I'm here. Two months. Luke, how about you? I didn't follow that. You kidding me? <laughs> Luke, uh, addict? Hi, Luke. I've never had this much time before. You know, 90 days. Seven. It's normal for kids to have imaginary friends, nightmares. What? <laughs> Has anyone seen Nellie? It's okay, I just thought she might like these cool old buttons I found upstairs. Hi, kids. Whoa. Can I have the hat? Mm. You know, big boys, they know the difference between what's real and what's imaginary. So what do you say, champ? <laughs> he loves it. Well, how do you know that? It's a twin thing. I'm having a total deja vu right now. Two, no, no, three kids share an open center for play. Kids' books are on the lower shelf, so even a little boy with a wheelchair can reach his favorites. That got really specific. And I see an accident waiting to happen if you don't pull those down. Bodies swinging back and forth right there. Yeah. A fearless moral inventory. We're only as sick as our secrets. Okay. I've burned Shirley for thousands of dollars. Like to feel like it was my job. Stolen from Steve on countless occasions. I broke Molly's heart. Missed her wedding. I even robbed my asshole of a father, though that one doesn't exactly keep me up at night. You're nine months clean, Joey. Nine months. I said, right, it's, it's full term. It's a fully formed little baby anywhere. Nine months clean is a palace. 
Hell House is wildly improved by loud typing. Seriously, let's right. work. <laughs> that sister of yours, the one that dropped you off? She seemed to believe in you. Tons, actually. Yeah, I'm walking. <clears throat> That's a twin thing. <laughs> I said I'm ready. I sent three. Well, I only got two. It must be stuck. You're scared. No, I'm not. I can tell. How? Because I'm scared. I hate that so much. <laughs> I was right. There's nothing. Jesus. That's a good one. Her image was there the whole time. Mm. It's only when she turned, did you notice her? Was it that for all the scenes? That's just grandma's, really. There's a reason why the program encourages us to stay out of personal relationships the first year. We're not in a relationship. Any kind of relationship. How the fuck do you expect people to get through this without friends? We don't, is we can start to hang our recovery on someone else instead of on ourselves. And you lean too hard on another addict? Well, shit. We didn't all end up in here because we're so reliable. Luke? Hey, hey, it's, uh, it's me. Um, I just, I just want to make sure that you're okay. Um. Fantastically uncomfortable. That was so uncomfortable, Jesus. <laughs> I, I was so relieved. I was like, oh, he just wanted his hat. You're not kidding about more. He just fun. wanted his hat. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know where to find him? Another spot. It's okay. I found her. We're coming back. We can be there in 20 minutes. This isn't a hotel, Luke. You know that. You run, you give up your spot. That's the way it is. Please, Paige. I'm sorry. But you did it to yourselves. I knew the rules when I left. I, just, I slept on it funny last night. I'm sorry. Can you get money? What about your sisters or your brother? Do you, do you think you can call them? I'll, I'll get some, OK? I'm, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get us a place to stay tonight, um, tomorrow too. And I'm going to get you clean again. Kind of in each other's heads. You know, it's been like that since we were kids. Once I broke my foot, and Nell called me a few minutes later, and she was just, she was just watching TV, and her ankle just went nuts. <laughs> now she, she's, she's always believed in me. The rest of the family, not so much. So yeah, of course I came. It's what she would have done for me. When we get there, just, just hang back. I don't want her to see your eyes. <sighs> she always fucking knows. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm. I'm really, really good. 90 days good, in fact. Yeah, I can tell you look different. Thank you. I got a day pass. Is, uh, is Steve here? Just kind of need to talk to him about something. Oof. He didn't tell you. Tell me what. We separated a month ago. Uh, 90 days, like, like I said. And I said, that's great. Lee, I need to borrow some money. Just a little. Jesus. No, it's not, it's not like that. Can you just give me Steve's address then, please? I did. You can't make calls in the first 30 days unless a caseworker yeah. signs off, so. Well, that's a little harsh, isn't it? Yeah. It's not as harsh as an overdose. Well. Um, what if you want to call your mom? So Luke tells me you're a writer. I did. I'm surprised he mentioned it. Where do you get your ideas from? Yeah. The short story with the imaginary little friend in the garden, the one, <laughs> do you know that one? Uh, Abigail. Yeah. <laughs> I put her in one of my books, too. 
Something tells me Luke won't get as much blowback for his. Oh, it's, it's, it's just an essay. It's, uh... I keep telling him he should publish it. Off his name alone. Maybe get a sweet place like this for himself. This is so awesome. You guys got it all, man. Where do you go from here? Mm -hmm. Nothing left to do except maybe fill this place up with some kids, I guess. So is this your first rehab, Joey? Uh, it's far from it. Not Luke's first rodeo either. I mean, you know the, the definition of insanity, Steve. Doing the same thing over and over. And over and expecting different results, sure, man. Sure. In a sense, I guess you could say it looks like the same thing over and over again, but that's not insanity. Out there on the streets, that's insanity. Doesn't mean you stop just because it gets a little repetitive. I get it. She's charming. She's articulate. She's funny. Might even say slick. You ever seen someone in withdrawal, Steve? Nope. They're freezing all the time. LA in July, no air conditioning, freezing. Muscle aches, stiff as boards, nausea, shakes. I wouldn't know. Well, she does. I'm not asking for her hand in marriage. I just wanted to bring a friend to dinner, and you're not even giving her a chance. Fresh out of those. I gave them all to you. Just because someone's a good person, just because you care about them, doesn't mean they won't burn you. You know, I'm so glad we got to share this milestone. That's all I wanted, 30 days clean, so you could make me feel like shit again. Jesus, Dave, it's fucking freezing in here. Keep the cash and sell that old camera. I need the iPad. It stays here. Uh, POV. Look at them playing with the POV. With just the shots. Because be last time nice, we saw it, too. he was far away. Yeah, food. this time oh, Steve's yeah. far away. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Makes them seem distant for different Damn, reasons. It's cold tonight. Man, I don't know if I'm making another couple blocks to that place. I'll just, um, just pop into the little junkie's room and be back in a minute. You got a fever? Yeah, maybe. My arms and legs, you know? Must legs. No, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I'm working. What are you doing? Be back in a flash. Joey! Joey! Wow. Remember what Steve said? Yeah. Just because someone's a good person doesn't mean they're not gonna burn you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. It's taken me 10 years to get 90 days clean. Now, um, I've been called a, a lot of things in, in my life, but uh, fearless is is not one of them. I thought I'd get braver as I got older, but um, I didn't. I am. Um, my mom uh, committed suicide when I was six years old, and my siblings and I were, we were sent to live with her aunt. I guess I just expected her to. Um, to come back, you know, to come take me home. Those taillights, they were the worst. Red eyes in the dark, just taking hope with them. But other things from, from when I was a kid, they, they came back. And I guess that's, um, I guess that's why I started using it in the first place, you know, not to keep those things away. You know, my, my family, they're not gonna believe this. They never really believe me. I'm, I don't blame them. You know, I fucked them over so many times. Lied, stole. I guess I'll, I'll never know how it felt for them to be done like that. I hope I never know. I, I couldn't help her. My arms and legs are so stiff. I just, I, I, I need, I need a bed, I, like a couch. I'll sleep on uh. the goddamn floor. Just. Please. Please. We'll come get you. I'm awake. Well, yeah, because you're awake. They say she's a nightmare, but she's real. I know she is. Mom, <clears throat> Dad, Stephen, Cheryl, Theo, you, me. 
It has to be seven. That keeps you safe. Sometimes you gotta do it a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come home, my love. This is... I'm so sorry. I did my arms and legs are so, so, so stiff. But you, you believe me, right? You gotta come with me. Janelle's dead. Hell. It was suicide. It wasn't. Well, that's interesting. I think <sighs> Luke is my favorite character so far, then. Um. <laughs> He's, uh, <laughs> pretty easy to love <laughs> from that episode. Yeah. That, that episode when I first fucking watched that fucking so big monologue. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah I, uh, Literally, the, the silent, like, him, in the faces he made when uh, he found out that died i was just watching him like believe he is excellent emotions. He, yeah. he is excellent round of applause um, for the actor jesus yeah um, Man, i think they're all pretty yeah. damn good yeah <laughs> well, they're that, all yeah really they are good. <laughs> His performance demanded so much more of him than other than uh i think the other ones did and he brought it all yeah so that episode was really good yeah yes, all yeah i could easily see people picking it for their favorite it, it, out of the four we've seen it's my favorite and then theo and yeah. then steven and then shirley the only uh, thing I've written down was that they had another good side character cast with the blind guy in the beginning. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's he was really good. Bonus ghost story. And yeah, the, the amount of times they'll have a camera sit on a person, just tell a full story, and they'll mm. even have and, little uh, like moments of stopping or stuttering that they, all feel uh, genuine. They, yeah. they really up the spooks this time as well. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. That, no, there was that one scene, really, and that was terrifying, and then the rest was just sort of Normal, I guess. I was almost referencing. Well, even like even that. the uh, the old lady. Um, but yeah. Oh right, comes... I forgot about her. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like this one's got some real spooks. Mola, you mentioned Young that her Mola. reflection was in the the brass thing the whole time until I didn't... and you only noticed it. Not not the first brass thing. The second one, you see it. You can see her uh, turned away in the first shot. The second shot, she turns to look. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I was thinking it would be so cool if she was there for like the whole. Yeah, man, some some I don't stuff. Know, maybe that would be inconsistent with the ghost rules. Some some stuff with a lot of these uh, a lot of, a lot of these episodes, some stuff you might miss if you're not really looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm well, of course. <laughs> now we've got that. we've got everyone except Nell now. So it's like give give me yeah. that give me that last piece. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I guess we're gonna see yeah. her die then. Is my, I my mean, only guess. Structurally, you you could call it simple and yet genius. Just the the way they've done this, because we've built up to 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 the, <laughs> yeah. to the one that has all really caused everything else out of place well, in the first place. A huge thing would be uh, other writers would tell a story chronologically, but then just deliberately not have the uh, characters mention the thing they don't want the audience. Oh, yeah, they've structured the story in a way, you know, it's not chronological, but they're just drip feeding the audience the information they want them to have when they want them to have it, which is so much more efficient than just trying to tell your story chronologically, but keep information from your audience. The inciting incident for everybody getting together is her death. We get that in episode one, and we're just seeing everybody circling around it, and now it's like, I suppose it's time yeah. <laughs> to see mm. what's going on. Also, oh, you know Christ. the, um, the big spooky man with the walking stick. Yeah. yeah. He's a. Uh, I I don't want to say this one one hundred percent certainty, but I'm pretty sure when I first saw this show and looked into it, uh, he's like all real. He's on like a big um like a green screen crane mini crane thing <laughs> that they've got him moving around on. That's super cool. Yeah. Really? If you, yeah when you watch him, pretty... there is an element of just like that looks good. <laughs> yeah, <it's really laughs> all the things I was expecting when he peeked out there. That is low on the list. Yeah, just this <laughs> yeah. lurching while floating. Yeah. He reminds floating me of something from Buffy. 
your first thought is like, oh yes, yeah, of a little little a coat that's hanging from the wall, and then Sutz moves like, oh shit. <laughs> the Tismimans, Mola. The gentleman, yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. It's nice and subtle, and this is again about like I guess recontextualizing. In the first episode, Stephen asks why Luke is awake, um, and he says because Nell is awake. And that we've had many lines like that throughout the show now, where why is one of them X, and it's like the other one is too, as if there's some kind of connection where one feels the other one will too. And of course, uh, it becomes pretty uh, like like he explains it to the to the girl as he like sprained or, or broke his ankle or whatever, and she felt crazy pain in her foot. And of course, with her dead. He's progressively over the episode getting stiffer, colder, yeah. and more anxious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the connection they have setting that up is it's like, so creepy. They never say it explicitly, but it's so clear. Like, <clears throat> like the idea that he's sharing the experience of being dead because she's dead. It's just like, oof. yeah. And obviously, does obviously doesn't help that it's like withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, everyone that's assuming that it's, he's just taking drugs again. Because of course, uh, mm. the few times we see Stephen and him interacting, Stephen just doesn't fucking believe him. He's super yeah. cynical. And he touches his neck a lot. Yeah, wondering if that's like a tick or if that's. Well, no, no, like, because because when they and he touches his neck a lot. Yeah, wondering if that's like a tick or if that's. Well, no, no, like, because because when they. Oh, no, like, because when they when I assume is the time she died at two o three, all of them wake up clutching their necks. Yeah, like, she gets killed in the neck. Yep. Killed in the neck. Uh, <laughs> the, okay, I'm pretty confident I know how she died then. The uh, the time Ooh, when, when the, the choice of words is so just wonderful. Where he says like he explains the experience and then he says um. I'm not using, you believe me, right? And all Steven says, he like pauses for a bit and then just goes, you gotta come with me. Yeah, you gotta come yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah. He's not answering he that question. Say, he can't say yes, but he can't say no. Yeah. Mm. Consistently, the cynic. And it's just, uh, it's wonderful now that we're, you know, four episodes in, so we've gotten such strong personalities mm. uh, built up for each of these people, so now we can watch them clashing, and it's even more, like, understandable and straightforward. And Just... Recontextualizing that scene from the first episode but on the stairs between Stephen and Luke, yeah. like mm -hmm. that, that cast Stephen in such a different light. Like he's just at the bottom of the stairs. He looks up, sees Luke, and he's like, "Oh, oh, you want money? That's my stuff. Okay, I can give you some money, but just give me my stuff back." And that's all there is yeah. to it. Are you cold? Are you cold? Yeah. How'd you know where to find me? How'd you know where to find me? Yeah, we've got all of this bonus context that Luke is just trying to make the best of the situation, and it keeps yeah. getting worse. Yeah. yeah. Pretty shitty day, I would say. Yeah, mm. there. Well, yeah, they tear him right down to the, to yeah. the end where he's bloody yep. and freezing. Shoeless. And, yeah. And it all goes back to his speech where he's like, oh, I hope I never have to go through that myself, mm. what I did to all my families, and yep. it all happens at once. Like, oh. Yep. When she kisses him, and you could tell it was so awkward in the. Yeah, it didn't seem right, and he was like thrown off by it. You you keep an eye on your hand when she's kissing yeah. him, and you can see her go for his money. Yeah, I did notice that. Big shame, but yeah, yeah. I guess she, she, she was what nine consume. months clean. When you're relapsing, none of that means anything. Well, nothing really means anything other than <clears throat> get yeah. next high. My expectations are sky high. <laughs> they shouldn't be. Not for episode five. It is good, but six is the one where it's sky high. Okay. No, sky high. My expectations are sky low. Nobody oh, watched the bat neck lady. I don't want to know about sky low. She sounds scary. Hey, bat neck lady. Oh, okay. look, these next two. Ooh, <clears throat> let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Here comes Nell. Ah, no oh. pre credits. What? Huh. Also, it's uh, an hour and ten minutes. This one's longer than any other. Forget that Netflix does that. God makes long episodes. No, it makes um, inconsistent length episodes. Ah. Oh. What if that's a kid is like, better. "Mom, just one more," and it's a two-hour one? It's like that's <laughs> fucked up. Ah, I'm scared of children. But that's a, that's a, that's got to be a phobia, right? Jesus. She screamed so loud it hurt my ears. Maybe it was Theo. No, 
it wasn't veal. You can hold on to it tonight, and when you're older, I'll give you this one. It's a bit like Paranoid too, so we're just like, oh no, night time, go away. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, she's gonna be left. No, I hate this scene so much. <laughs> no, <laughs> such a cool shot. Mm. I'm frozen. I can't talk or move my arms or legs. And how long does this last until you're able to move again? Maybe a minute, maybe two. But it feels like hours sometimes. Sleep paralysis is actually more common than you think, but it's completely harmless. Which is easy for the sleep tech to say, right? <laughs> uh, it's funny the things people sometimes report. Shadow people, animals, dead loved ones. A little spill. What's that? Just, <laughs> just call me Arthur. So what now, Arthur? Well. It won't stop the process, but could get rid of the panic. It's nice to be listened to. Do you drink coffee? Uh, yeah, I... Are you... Are you asking me if I want to get coffee? Uh, it's, uh, it's for the health history section in your file. Oh, I was that? planning on waiting until the end of your visit to ask you out for coffee. But since you brought it up, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so where did he go? She doesn't seem to be around when, you know, the current... Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Let there be a happy thing. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just had a whole overload of misery. <laughs> I'll buy it for half a second. Penny's gonna drop. Oh, both. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> ten minutes. It took her almost ten minutes. Luke said he might move out there too. <laughs> He's following you west, huh? Yeah, it's a twin thing. I wouldn't get my hopes too high. I mean, who knows if he'll be in any condition to? I hope he does. It's very nice. <laughs> this is the best. Too much champagne, maybe. <laughs> <gasps> it's been a long time. <sighs> oh. dead and she was back. Arthur died of an aneurysm. I know it looked like an aneurysm. I know what's to blame. Hill House. Hill House. I don't expect you to believe me. Your hair is awful tangled, Mr. Bristles. Maybe I can find a brush for you. Mrs. Dudley, look what I found. In the toy room. Where? So can I keep it? Yes, I'm sure it's fine that you keep the tea set. Nellie. Mommy, look what I found. Can we have a tea party? Not now. Young lady, we have a very, very important job. And that's to take care of this house. 
Would you like to tell your sister what you did? I didn't. She says she didn't. I have a steel poker in my head, and my daughters are trashing my... I didn't do it. I swear. You didn't. You can tell? I don't see why it matters. I'm pulling down this wallpaper anyway. I think time shenanigans. I actually kind of suspect time shenanigans. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm proud of you. It doesn't matter where you do it. It matters as you want to change. Where were you? I've been having a hard time sleeping in that house without him. Yeah, it's, it's Again, just been... Can you take a right and a clover, please? I just need uh, one more favor. Why are we... Okay, so here it is. Um, I need to get well before I go in. You get well. Um, one last time, you get to kind of go through the gates and you get to kind of get it out of your system. He's just not going to sell to me. But um, he doesn't know you. So, and it's it's going to take, I promise you. Look, I'm tired of this shit, okay? Look, I can bullshit Steve and Cheryl and Theo if I got it. Never you. Believe me now. No, I always believed you. You know him. No, I get it. I've been having a really hard time, too, and nobody wants to see it, you know? No. I want to see it, okay? I want to see it. No collecting those buttons. You guys need a little help sometimes, right, Millie? I wish you would have called me. That is not the way you help an addict. You said you would. Please, you know I don't like you. You said you would. Where? The pillow. Anything? No. Theo. Okay, okay. That's where he died. Nellie, I don't want to. You said you. Hey, hey! The fuck! Nellie! Anything? Jesus, no, all right? I am feeling serious fucking concern. That is what I am feeling. I just want to know if he's still here. He's not. And that fucking sucks. But I didn't think I would be treated like a goddamn. I'm circus. sorry! Does Shirley know what he made you do? Like, you're above taking money from family. Yeah, you really want to talk about what Shirley knows and doesn't know? What does that mean? I guess that's a no. She might not let you freeload anymore. No. I have my limits. Only with us. And never with yourself. You've never cared about anyone more than yourself. And that's sad. But don't lecture me about adulthood, Theo. Not from Shirley's fucking guest house. I'm so glad you're here. Why do you keep lying to these people? To sit here and listen to you talk about things that you don't believe. No. And you tell me I'm crazy, and that mom was crazy, and Luke's crazy, and we're all just nuts. And then you tell our stories, yeah. and you're supposed to be my big brother. You're supposed to protect me. And then you make so much money. No. I'm just asking why. I just want to know why. What the fuck, Nell? It was a fair question. You don't come in here and embarrass me like that. Me embarrass Shh. you? Have Jesus. you read what you wrote about You've us? You've had six years to file a complaint. Why the hell are you doing this now? Are you off your meds? No. Bullshit. High depressant phase. You don't get to just start smashing up our lives because you're transitioning into a new treatment, Nell. Not the time or place. And I'm standing up for myself for the first time. You're certain you're taking your medication. It always comes back to one thing, the house. And I think that if you were to look at it today after all these years, you'd find it's not a monster. It's barely even a house. I... What would Arthur say to you if... What do you think he'd want for the rest of your life? Are we going back for mom? Not yet. 
Stevie, I need you to be in charge, okay? What's wrong with mommy? She looked hurt. When? I'll bring her back. But I have to go now. Come here. You were the last one out. What'd you see? Dad woke me up, carried me out. I'm not sure what I do. Did you see anything? I don't know what I saw. We were in the red room having a tea party with Abigail and Mommy. How? The red room's locked. Four, five, six. I found her. She's okay now. It's just paint. You hold on to this. I'll try to be back here as soon as I can, okay? It's hard to explain, but... I'm worried about Luke. Where did he go, Nelly? You're so beautiful. So are you, Mama. I'm sorry for everything I said. I always should have believed you. I'm so sorry that we fought. I'm so proud of you, but. Clean and sober, all thanks to you. Hi, gorgeous. yours now. <laughs> it's time to wake up, sweetheart. That was a terrifying scene. So what we're <laughs> through it was, yeah. Just yes, I was right. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Pretty good. Yeah. I demand more commentary than that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my thoughts in order. Take it away, Jay. You guys suck. Sorry, next episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm well aware. No. <laughs> I think it's everything I uh, want to say it would be spoilery. Like, yeah, uh, that's, like, that's why I've been watching <laughs> silent for the whole thing. Mm. So something to appreciate is that most of the scenes with like family stuff, they're almost like filling in the end of the, the picture that is the full characters yes. and how they interact with each other. We've got answers to a lot of stuff now. I think they established in like episode one that uh, Nell and Theo, something happened between them. We still haven't talked since LA. Theo. Don't. I'm just waiting for an apology. And that scene mm -hmm. is pretty fantastic. And got all the context of the book at this point. The tumultuous journey that Luke has been on with his drugs, despite the episode we saw, basically putting him in full, like, uh, good mode. What, what he did with Nell in this one is like, damn, dude. Yeah. Um, but of course, that's the struggle, and that's what a lot of them see in him rather than uh, anything else. Yeah. Yeah, we've got the full relationship map now. What's missing is the mother and father at this point. Yeah, we know how the Go father ahead. relates to them, or, or the, rather, they relate to yeah. him. I guess not the other way around. But we haven't really seen much of present day dad yet. Yeah, Nell, like in this episode, goes from super happy and stable and just falls the fuck apart all the way it right until the end. Destroys her. Everything crumbles. Yeah. And then they give her everything she wants to the point where, of course, 
it's entirely blatant. Like every character gives her the one sentence that she wants, basically. And yeah, mm. it's very on the nose. I'm almost hesitant to call this, but unlucky, I guess, on the aneurysm because it's a supernatural tisms. I guess I'm hesitant to raise that card, but yeah. And currently, um, if it literally is mm. just like we needed a character to die at this point in the story. So they had an aneurysm. Fuck it. Like, that's not I mean, great, I feel. It helps us heap suffering onto now, so... Can't comment on that until yeah. the, sh the show has told us everything it wants to tell us. Uh, I, like, kind of adore her in the... Uh, she's constantly had to deal yeah. with just horror, just in and out yeah. every day. And um, she has even... I know this is a bit harsh, but at least with Luke, he was using shit tons of drugs and he would take money from people and all this shit. She's, like, done nothing but be... Yeah, she's, like, the pure soul of the family, pretty much. Yeah, and, and a lot of them want nothing to do with her once she's uh, yeah. lost her tisms. She's so disconnected from all of them. The many hundreds of ways she's tried to deal with it until the fucking therapist suggests, hey, go back to the house, how about that? You can <laughs> Deal with your fears. Yeah, I just quite <laughs> like this because like a I'm good just... mixture of the supernatural of normal because of the information he has. Like, oh, okay, come just check out the house. It's just a normal fucking house. Well, that's yeah. that's the whole thing, right? Like yeah. a character like Steven, it's like if this was in the real world, he's totally justified in yeah. the way that he he views things. Why would he believe any of this stuff? Especially if he hadn't seen it. Well, no, it's, yeah, he's justified in what he believes. He's less justified than he wrote the books about. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's definitely like, pretending yeah, to believe sure. it isn't justified. I don't think. I always felt bad when he shouts the fuck out of her in the uh, library or whatever it is. Of course, yeah, I, I get, I get why he did, but like, oh, I feel nothing yeah. but bad for it. He's like towering over her, and all she's doing is curling up the more and more as the yeah. scene goes on. Yeah, everything goes to shit for her, and it ends. Well, see that scene. It's like, it might even get you for a second to be like, this is nice. It's like, you know she dies. <laughs> like, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, of course, they, they don't... They, it's not like they lie at any point. They keep reminding you this is not right. This is very yeah. wrong. There's no pretense of trying to deceive you. Another little thing in one of the first episodes where the, the mother says, like, oh, you need to tidy up the ropes up yeah that was just last episode i think i think yeah was i it? think it's four i, I remember picking say, up yeah. on that that's, that's yeah. what made me so that combined with i guess all the other prodigious number of hints the show drops was what made me so certain yeah when i first well, saw I mean, this the, the second the rope run. came yeah, into frame yeah yeah the the bent neck lady and the um it was the way she fell um, into frame when um, she went to get the water. Mm -hmm. For me, well, it wasn't even it just that. Like, it was literally just the fact yeah, that that's everyone weird. woke up at the same time clutching their necks and that it was, well, and her go through know, the bent neck lady. Like, that was, that was the thing that made me... Grabbed his neck constantly. So I guess Luke is dying wow. um, to yeah. a cane and a hat. <laughs> of course. He will drown mm. in hats. When Luke spots her medication in her purse as well, and he just goes, ah, yeah. oh, fuck. Like, because he knows that she's desperate for help as well, but he's too busy with his own shit. Of course, that's, that's pretty blatant when, when he's like, how are you doing? And like halfway through her explanation, he's like, take a left here. She's like, oh. Yeah, okay. it feels, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, there's been a huge amount of references to how Nell is like invisible. The, the amount of characters, of course, all of the phones being like knocked off when she's trying to call people. Yeah. Interruptions. She says in like... I think it's episode two. She's like, nobody will play with me. Nobody will have tea parties yeah. with me. And now we know as well, oh, yeah. tea parties like a major thing that happens at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Nobody um, wants to deal with her. That's what you get with an estranged family. She pops up at one point. I think it's episode four. And, and the mum is like, ah, oh, my little Houdini. And it's like, no. <laughs> She's around. Nobody fucking pays attention. And it makes me feel sad for her. The way what's this, uh, the dad reacts to her mentioning the bent neck lady again makes me it again reinforces he knows a lot more than he lets on to well anyone these episodes are particularly good at being like giving you pieces of information where you're like oh that's oh oh what is what does that mean then mm. oh yeah oh how well, they start the story and now we're here and everything just starts tying together it's like oh wow that's really well made <laughs> <laughs> You wonder like mm -hmm. how this would play out if you if someone edited all the oh to be chronological yeah hmm. yeah that 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 is what chronologically means you cut out you fucking <laughs> idiot oh uh, <laughs> you don't touch my balls what you want me to touch your balls imagine <laughs> imagine you'd had sex with someone and they just like start they just lay back and go ah uh, 
That was entertaining. So we've got all of our characters set up. Mm. Yes, which means it's time to knock them down. Okay, slap yourself, because this one, seriously, this is some of the best shit you've ever Did seen. Did you hear that? Did someone just slap mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, before I could even think about it, I was like, oh, sure. And then I did. <laughs> Netflix. Ah! <laughs> so bright. Belgium. In movies, they always say that they um, look like they're sleeping. She doesn't look like she's sleeping. She looks dead. She looks great. You did a really good job, as usual. Thanks. But she doesn't look like she's sleeping. Most of what people say at a funeral is a wish. They're in a better place. They're at peace. They're smiling down. People just wishing out loud. How bad was it? You might want to slow down. It's going to be a long night. You mm -hmm. should have told them not to eat dinner first. There's plenty in the kitchen if we burn through that. Steve says he didn't even have shoes when he found them. We hide our purses, though. Please, Luke, don't fuck this up. Has that been a cut yet? Hmm. It's just a little right. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. He seems a lot better than I expected. <laughs> I think he's like actually clean. Real wild. So what was it? The jailbreak? Long story. I thought. Uh, I thought I could do it. I know. She's right there. Take your time. So where's Lee? She'll be here tomorrow. We're, uh, We're taking a break. If it's all the same to you, maybe we can save this conversation for a little later. If you were married, you'd know that sometimes people need a little <laughs> room. Get you a drink. <sighs> Thank Christ. Thank you. That's her, Detective. Positive. It's a positive ID. That, that's... I get it. It's, a, it's crazy. Right. I'm drinking every time I feel like punching something. Fucking fair. Fuck. I still don't get why she'd go there in the first place. Well, Mom. She barely remembered Mom. Well, what then, Dr. Crane? Punch. You put yourself in first class? I put him there, too. And made Dad fly coach? <laughs> he insisted. Listen, it's not like we were really talking each other's ears off before that. Wait, sir. It's coming down. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Sorry, I'm... A little late. That's okay. <clears throat> How was your flight? Uh, you know. Thanks for being here. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get you anything? Um, there's got tons to eat, plenty to drink. This is Kevin's coping mechanism. He turns into a waiter. Yeah, you know, to see all of you in the same room, well, not all, uh, under. Neither can I. Look at that narrow grown up. What? I'm well put. Sorry. You want to do the eulogy tomorrow? Because it's. You want to go see her? Yes, actually, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Oh, Shirley. Shirley. You. You, you, you did. Um, she looks beautiful. Is the. I could use a bathroom where I would just head closest. up that hall to okay. your left at your at the end. Okay. Seems a few bricks short, as it were. Yeah. That doesn't seem right at all. I think it's a cut. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it would fall. Where'd you go? I don't know. I guess I was wandering. Maybe I was sleepwalking. Jesus Christ! Honey, don't say that. You just said it. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Someone broke the sanity. to you. Chandelier, it just fell. What the hell happened? Language. We don't know. Grab that other side. I want to move this out of the way so no one's tripping on it. 
Got it. Ready? Yep. Come with me. Let's go sit down. You know, my window just broke. Seriously? It exploded. You okay? I I'm fine. Let me go check it out. Uh, can I come? Um, sure. Go ahead. Go with your sisters. Come on. No, okay, not quite. So for every five seconds, that's only one mile away. So that one was actually closer. Hey, Flashlights in the kitchen. Okay. You got him. All right. Okay. Benedict Lady! Benedict Lady! Mommy's seen things too. Sometimes mommy sees people here too. But they won't hurt us, okay? What'd you see? Huh. Everybody we'll okay in here? Yeah, everybody's fine. Thought you hated this house. <sighs> what I tell you, Nellie, it's what storms do. They. Where's your sister? Theo? She was right there. I was holding her hand the entire time. Sweetie. No! I mean, where could she have gone? It's only a few seconds. Maybe she went to her room. You think she went upstairs? Nellie. I think if she went to the halls. No, Don't worry, my man. She's gonna be okay. How do you know? Cuz, I won't let anything happen to her. To any of you guys. That's my whole job. Luke. Luke! Luke, and Janet, she gets fed up and she tells Nellie to stop using whatever it was and speak properly. You're 10 years old, speak properly. And Nellie looks her right in the eye and says, all words are made up at first. <laughs> Puffalo padded, puffy envelope. I know those stories because I was there for those stories. I just want to hear some new stories. Just to tell Nell that her letters uh, to Santa would be safe and warm in the North Pole if she used a puffalo. She only asked for presents for, for you guys. And God damn it. Your mom would say, oh, no, we water that seed. So that's her tree. Always, you know, handwritten. She wrote me once a month just telling me the amazing things going on with you guys. There were seven of us, and now there's five, because two of us decided to die. She knew the price the rest of us pay when someone does that, and she did it anyway. I don't know why she didn't feel like she could talk to me. The bear thing. Yeah. Steve, uh, I was outside pretending to be a bear, banging on the tent, and uh, Nellie says, this tent is magic. It makes us indivisible. Still, in the bear voice, I think you mean invisible. And now he shouts at the bear. I meant what I said, bear. I'd like to go back to something you said. So maybe she mentioned something in one of her monthly letters that might have raised the flag about, I don't know, her state of mind. You see, we're all aware of how you like to hold back information when a family member offs themselves. You want to do do this now, huh? Nellie mentioned in one of her puffalopes that she crashed a book signing of mine about a month ago. No, she, she did had to not. scream no. at me. Wait, what? Yeah, does that sound like Nell to you? No. Huh? Any psychiatrist worth their shit would have kept her on a much shorter leash. She's a fucking quack. She said the bent neck lady was back. Mental illness. No. Clear as day. Yeah. You let her believe all that bullshit, which makes you culpable. Who's the bed neck lady? It's just like, Mom, you ignore the no, signs and you hope it'll go away, and then no. you hold back information. No, he, even if I held back anything, it was to protect you kids. He's, he, he's entitled. He's, what? What? What is that? What? What's that? Theo's drunk. I'm just pissed. And this is the part of the show where you. Break out my goddamn uh, talk book. About propagating delusions. Oh, you took all that paranoia and, and craziness strong. and you mass marketed it to jumpstart your writing career. Really? That's why none of us ever took your Surely. fucking money, Steve. Cut it out. And you're fucking drunk. But we're supposed to be honoring Nelly. And you don't know what I feel. And I am allowed to process that any way that I want. And to. dictate how we all grieve our dead. <laughs> Fuck! Fuck. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. Oh my god, don't touch me! I have enough of my own grief. I I don't need yours, too. Whatever that means. I took the money, Cheryl. I got my degree. I started my career. The book was a hit. The royalties still haven't dried up. I am fucking glad that I took it. Live under my roof, eat my food, and lie to my face for how many years? 
All That's right. not gonna fly. All right, slow oh, up, sure. Fuck you! Fuck both of you! You can fuck off back to Cali, Steven. You can start looking for a new place to squat, Dr. Crane. If I were you, I'd get down off that high horse oh, before I fall. Oh, if you were me, you wouldn't be such a fucking asshole! You just we took the money, too. No, you didn't. Cheryl, you keep cutting prices down to cost. How else was I supposed to keep the business going? I mean, I mean, look, look, look. We took that money and changed it into something that helped people on the worst day of their lives. Stop. Both of you, just, just out. I can't. Surely. I can't look at either one of you right now. What the hell? What? Who did this? I didn't. Someone thought what? This was funny? This was Something here. Good. What the hell? Just put batteries in. Okay, I'll, you get fresh ones. I'll keep looking. Nelly? Live? herself. No. Neither did Mom, did she? As soon as he leave, as we leave the room, you start working on him, too? Oh, Steve. Oh, no, let's, let's hear it. He's not going to want to hear that from me. <laughs> right? what I'm talking about. I don't understand why this family has such a hard time acknowledging mental illness. Nell didn't kill herself. The house did. And you don't understand Hill House, Steve. You never did. <sighs> Bullshit well, you want to hear this or not? A haunted house. You don't what, even Steve? get it. I don't. You're the ghost. You are, Dad. My you're all of a kind. the wrong parent died. Sick. It was here. It was right here. None of you could see me. Why couldn't you see me? Don't do that ever again. I thought the health things had got you. I thought they took you. I'm so glad it's... you're okay. I was right here. I was right here. The whole time, none of you could see me. I was gonna, so I was gonna say, yeah. geez, you weren't kidding about one of the best episodes of television around. <laughs> <laughs> Masterpiece. That's what that is. Nailed it from every perceivable angle. It's nothing like what I was expecting. Like, they just finished setting up like the snooker table, and that was the break. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously there's way more to come, it's just that that Mastercraft, I don't know how they managed to make everything so perfect in those fucking mm. long-ass shots, man. Imagine pitching that you want to do, like, 15-minute long takes with child actors to Netflix. But also, <laughs> think about the fact that they built a set from which this particular area connects to the house. Mm. Yeah. That they can, yeah. I wasn't sure if that was if they really did that with a set or I think the the cut might have been with the chandelier so that they could also have the upstairs and everything. Yeah, I was going to say that cut is probably because 
the house as as an actual house isn't connected to this actual part. Yeah. They're instead. But there were there were totally hidden cuts within the fifteen minutes. It's possible. There's no way to prove without talking to the director, but there's a couple of pans. The, the second there's no actors in frame, it's possible that we have trickery yeah. afoot. It's not too often that happens, and it's still the huge argument that they all have is so amazing. Yeah. I love that the argument. I love that argument. So much shit that they did here. Yeah, they, so. there was a... Th I can't remember what the actual number was, but I remember reading it was something like 50 to 100 crew members all running around getting everything right while they were doing this. Yeah, all like yeah I can only really imagine. Lighting imagine effects. fucking that up. I'm sure a lot of people during that production, it was their turn to mess up, and they just sort of were like, <laughs> yeah, this, it's going to happen. We're trying to do something really rough. It's going to take us a few attempts to get this right. Yeah, I have to imagine they, they recorded this more than once. <laughs> they, they had to do it a yeah. couple of times. There's even there's moments where it's unclear if it was a part of the script or if it's just a partial flub, but like at one point, Steven says... As soon as, he le as we leave the room, you start working on him too. Oh, Steve. But I mean, people do that, so... That's, why, know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That could yeah. very well be a part of the script. There's no reason for it not really to be. Awesome. Yeah, they all do just, amazingly well. Uh, yep. The really cool thing about the really long shots and the way they use the specific, especially with, I guess, the themes of this episode, they're very in thing with it. Like, it almost gives us a look at Nell's perspective throughout yeah. both of those nights. Mm -hmm. That seems well, like the entire point of it. The camera's yeah. Nell. Yeah. Here's a, uh, here's a question for you. Did you guys see Nell, like, in the first long take? We get what? a picture of it so that he knows. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, I didn't see that. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Almost said I think I saw her every time she turned up, unless I missed any, but of course I wouldn't know. Well, I wouldn't yeah, I... yeah. One of the many hundreds of jobs I, I suppose the, uh, the crew members had would be, uh, obviously, because who knows how much of the storm is real stuff versus like a green screen and then they just do everything in post. Mm. But, so she goes into the room. She sorts out the uh, the water coming in, I think, anyway. But when she comes back out, spot the difference. Yep. Now, the first time that I had watched this with you, I asked, wait a second, oh. one of those statues shifted. Oh, that's really cool. Wait, oh, I'm stupid. The house is evil. Oh, it's good. Everything's this is so deliberate. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, awesome. I'm trying to see what the difference between the statues is. Look really hard, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the first picture, uh, where, where they're all lined up behind uh, Hugh, the dad, it's pretty much, uh, at least I feel like they're uh, in line in terms of their relationship status, I feel like. Mm. Like Steve basically, basically yeah. hates them, he's all the way in the back. Steve yeah, if, you know, it's like way back. If yeah. you remember when the dad hugs them before he leaves to go back, uh, Steve Those and Theo two, don't hug him. Two, yeah. No, I legit can't see the difference here. Yeah. Look at their heads. <laughs> no, but their heads are in the same positions. No, they're not. Okay, so they're in not. one... Remember, it's from the same angle. This is the so same angle. Oh, the, yeah. oh so I thought this was from left opposite angles. Her. There's a, there's a lot. The uh, Both the time where they all get traded out for the younger visions mm -hmm. in the yep. pan around and when young Nell is in the coffin, that, uh, that hits the old heartstrings quite a bit. Yeah. Christ, I can't get over that argument. I guess that's yeah. that's your reward when you like spend five episodes just building well, up like underground yeah. tensions between people. And it's a sort of a fascinated look into like I don't care about this situation if nobody's dying because that's high stakes. It's like the stakes <laughs> here are exposing that there's blood money that's been switched between hands. It's like, but. It's like explosive because we've learned so much about all these different people and all these different situations. The only stakes here are just these people's relationships to each other. Yep. And the um. You no, know, we have to blow up five planets, or else. <laughs> or how will we know people are invested if we don't? Well, I just, I just feel like this this is the perfect way to in a very in 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 what six hours you can tell someone like this. Just have your characters right. Get this your characters right, and you'll be alright. Right. <laughs> They'll do the rest for you if you get them right. And stick to that. Kevin is like so relatable as fuck in this scenario. Like he's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. just there, it's like, hey, can I get you anything? Being when weird, everyone's yeah. shouting, and she she's like the only one who hasn't taken it, and he's just fucking sweating. Yeah, there's still so much left to resolve. It's just it just exploded. Yeah. That's yeah. all that yeah. happened, really. Nothing's really been picked like, up. 
Yeah. Well, funnily enough, right, if the show ended on that episode, I'd be confused, but I'd still be like, holy shit, there's some amazing character writing in here for six hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, plus you'd have, but, you'd, but it would feel like there was enough there for you to unravel everything, but you have to put in all the work. That's that. Yeah. Think that was the last episode of a show. What I would do next is figure, is like look up people trying to figure out what it all means. Yeah, and see mm -hmm. what clues were missed to explain what is clearly a, must have happened and what they wanted us to think happened with everything. But yeah, those two kids talking about how she was missing and couldn't be found, and she's like crying while trying to explain it all. I, like I remember when I first saw this, I was just like, I'm sorry. Are you like 20 years old inside a kid's body or something? Just I, I don't understand how they found such. Amazing actors that are so young. Uh, is, I've never you seen shit? child Crazy. actors that don't annoy me yeah. in this way. <laughs> Funnily one enough, the thing. the worst of the kids' actors, as far as I'm concerned, is the fucking oldest one. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, like he's the only one that there's a couple of deliveries where I'm like, eh, I don't know about that, but the rest of them are fucking great. And yeah, you at that point you're just like, is it the director that's doing this shit? As well as obviously the work from the actors. It must be really hard to direct kids. Like I, I yeah, do imagine that's a huge amount of talent to mm -hmm. direct kids. Well, imagine legally they have to have their parents there as well to make sure, like, everything is, is tip-top. And so if you were like, please do that again, but actually care, and the parent's like, wow, yeah. here it comes. <laughs> I, I, I think you <laughs> also only have them on set for, like, three or four yeah, hours yeah. Yeah. at a day. Christ, imagine pitching something with child actors. Let's make That's, it... Yeah. Up, surely. 15-minute takes with child actors. Yeah. <laughs> And it went really well. Yeah. Like, if this was shit, we would all be going, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? You were doing 15 minute takes. <laughs> Fucking moron. Well, I have a lot of respect for ambition. Just, you know, less so when it's Terrible. misguided. <laughs> Screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, like, watching this as the writer for Batwoman. <laughs> <laughs> Why would she even say that? They'd be like, oh, they did Dude, terrible. I was gonna say, I'd love the idea if they went like, yes, yeah, alright. <laughs> playing through, like, the, the bent neck lady scene. The way the argument starts, it's, it's so beautifully written. It all, it all begins with just memories of Nell. Then how mm. she made up uh, a word. She would always write about how much they all need certain things and she wants them to have it. The key detail he threw in was every month she would tell me about how well you guys are doing. Which means, if he hadn't have thrown that in, that he was getting them monthly, we might have avoided the whole fucking explosion. Maybe. Because, <laughs> of course, Stephen was like, they're looking for people to blame, all of them are. Yeah. Yeah. So Stephen was like, you should have been able to pick something up from the fucking letter. And then it, it, it naturally goes from <coughs> there, like... Because you can see him sort of uh, fuming a little bit, you know, as uh, as Luke's telling his story. He seems mm -hmm. fidgety. He's yeah, you can't handle it. About something. Yeah, this and, is and of the, course, yeah. The stability levels have switched from the first, like, five episodes, basically. Steven is having a meltdown. Yeah, while Luke seems pretty Luke focused, is, actually. Yeah, Luke is pretty focused. The blocking throughout the episode is amazing, by the way. It starts to pan around um, as the dad's yeah. telling a story. And Theo goes from grabbing the drink over there to just resting mm -hmm. against a wall. I can't imagine how meticulous this was, like, at all times, making sure everybody gets into the frame that needs to be. Literally, I was getting, like, the, it was so good that I was realizing how stressing me out, thinking about how someone had to organize this. <laughs> you yeah. know where the characters are and how they're organized within all of these constantly moving shots. Like, watching it almost felt, reminded me of, like, the stress of doing complicated I feel like it had to have been storyboarded heavily. I dude, I, 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 I hope yeah. that every degree of effort went into this thing because I want it to be proof that if you try really hard, you get really good shit. Even like just the swapping out and moving around of objects, items, and people. Obviously, the ghosts mm. coming in and going wherever they need to. Swapping out the fucking coffin body. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's what seeing wherever everyone ends up whenever the camera comes to rest is just really interesting to think about. And it's funny because it sneaks up on you, you're watching the episode and you're like, wait, we haven't cut in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something's up. Something's going on. I, I just, mm. I did have that moment of realization where I was like, hang on, they, have, have they cut yet? I'm not sure. Like went, the That's an interesting question. And I went, oh. That just makes oh, me I think, see. oh, are they gonna? <laughs> and, yeah. the, um, and they did, but... When Theo falls over, um, f feels quite real, and it is kind of funny, and then the second they try to grab her and she fucking loses her shit, because mm -hmm. she just, yeah. she was trying, just before she fell, she was trying to explain that no one gets to talk shit to her after what she felt, obviously referring to when she grabbed Nell. Mm. 
Yeah. Like, there's so much I'm going on. Clear, like, yeah. I'm still not clear on how much of it she knows. None it's not them... necessarily that she it's knows, like, it's... a story, but that she might know a feeling. Yeah. yeah. Feelings, In fact, that's, that's the impression you get, yeah. As opposed to explicit, very detailed, clear memories. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we said it earlier that she only knew the. She sees like flashes drama, and experiences a strong oh, feeling. The fucking statues and, I need to know now. And Shirley like completely disregards her like offhand comment her, about I've got enough well, of my own yeah. grief to comment, and that she just dismisses her entire coping mechanism. You know, it's yeah. like how you know how dare you cope this specific way? Mm. You and Theo have caught up to rags now. All three of you are at the same level for uh, knowledge. Speak while uh, Metal, Fringy, and I aren't. And this is the thing, if we do season two as well, which I want to, we get to speculate after every episode as a team. Yeah. Yay. Mm. We get Come to go, down. oh, I think the butler did it. What if it's garbage? I hope it isn't. The sort of flaws seem to accentuate in these scenes being that Shirley takes her, like, being a good person all the way up to I'm better than all of you. Yeah, um, the most holier than that. Theo just... Uh, Drown in them so sorrows. And, yeah. Just drinking and staying in the back. And saying like in every... snarky things and being mm -hmm. mean to everyone. Yep. Luke and the dad mostly were just watching them deteriorate. Mm. Yeah. Up until Steve just fucking you explodes get, in his face. You get the impression that Luke's yeah. constantly thinking. Like, yeah. just thinking, thinking about yeah. what happened. Because I'm obviously... Wondering... So much. Luke and you, they seem to have a rapport over the... Uh, the whole supernatural it's kind of thing. It's the whole deal. idea of um the idea of who knows what, which is an interesting yeah. inversion. Right? And who the believes it? This guy knows the younger uh, knows the least, and the youngest know the most. Who knows, believes, or cares well, about? It. <laughs> yeah, the the dad was pretty explicit about it. He's like, you you don't understand the house, and you never did. And he's like, it's mental illness. Yep. Yeah, even though he's, he's said it thing that, I mean, remember he even said hereditary. Yeah. So that seems to be what he thinks. And that's even more fuel for the resentment fire against you. Right, yeah, yeah. like it's almost like just your fault that we're all like this because yep. you gave it to us. And you made no effort to curtail it. In fact, he, he reckons he encouraged it. If characters don't piss you off, even if you disagree with them, that mm. tends to be a good sign that you've done your job well. Characters are screaming over the top of each other <laughs> at each other to the point where you can it's hard to make out what anyone's ever really saying but you're like enamored rather than mm -hmm. frustrated like, rolling your like, eyes in frustration that's you've done pretty well with your characters good job so yeah the episode's pretty good yeah i nah. feel like i know all of these characters pretty well yeah and they're of yeah. they're of what like I am five of them. I actually know the names of the characters, and I'm fucking terrible with names. Of yes! Characters. <laughs> like, legit, at the start of this, I was thinking, it would be cool if, like, there was a kind of, like, subtitles you could have, but it doesn't tell you the dialogue, it just tells you the characters' names as they enter the frame. <laughs> enter stage left. But that's the thing, like, uh, that first episode, they do what seems to be everything they can to keep re-establishing everyone's names because they know this is going to be a little bit complicated to follow yeah. but uh I didn't, I didn't have it by the first episode i knew like steve i think and that was wow well, because he was our yeah. pov character yeah. so that would be reason. and i think that they take care of us in that way because they get you invested <laughs> one by one by one by one now you'll know all of them it's almost like a fucking crossover when you get to episode six yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of effort to get you invested but they don't treat you like an yeah, idiot we make everything incredibly it's they're so well realized they feel like real people a really solid understanding of all the cogs turning in their psychologies i give it five stars i'm speculating out of ten i don't know yes oh <gasps> ten half stars I, i'm not i'm not i'm not sure if the fact that they don't all the re all the rest of them don't have a very clear specific ghost they see makes me think they survive but the fact that the cats make me think they don't. Speculatism, the when Hugh like leans into himself and starts murmuring, he is like assuredly talking to the ghost of the mother. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the first time he does it, he's like murmuring about look how grown up they all are or something like that. And as if he yeah. just responded to someone yeah. saying something to him. Yeah. I love uh, how they react to it. It is entirely how I would in real life where yeah. The first yeah. time, you look around, you're like, okay. Yep. That was weird. Uh, second time, you're like, okay, this is getting a bit... And then by the third time, the fucking Steven being like, what the hell is that? What are you doing? Yeah. It's just yeah. like... <laughs> in a fairly justifiable position, because 
man looks completely insane. Oh yeah, he, he does like the sort of, he seems like he's just had the life drawn out of him, you know? He looks like an empty shell and they, they he does it so well. Mm -hmm. He talks like, like he's shell shocked. Yeah, like the fact that he is casually just talking to a ghost that he probably knows no one else can see, mm. but he doesn't care. And he seems like how long it's been there. Oh yeah, that's a good question actually. <laughs> Uh, wow, episode six. That was great that we just watched it, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I remember like... it like it was just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was right then. And so there's nothing for us to Hold really on, discuss because we did discuss it. Unless any lingering thoughts about episode six, as it, some people may even feel it was so long ago now, like two weeks or something. I don't remember much, but I think there was a couple of storms. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is no. everyone roary? No. Yes. No. Yes, I'm ready. Ah, pedophile Whoa. industries. Oh no. Hey, they uh, were making a statement, which means it's okay. Yeah, they were saying pedophile's bad, idiot. Oh no, it's spooky time. Kill Bill. Spookies. What did Bill do to you? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, bro, stone. <laughs> Man, when you're doing that at half past nine in the night, you got somewhere to be. <laughs> Anyone with a loud vehicle? Statistically, has a small peen. Yeah. Facts. The smaller the car, the larger the penis. I drive a Mazda Miata, so I'm fine with that. I drive a scooter, so wow. If you're watching this and you drive a large vehicle, it is a statistical fact that you have a small peen. I feel sorry for Derek, who just heard that. Yeah, sorry, Derek. All the people who have big haunted houses, very tiny penis. Very tiny. Micro, even. Did you say you took cream with sugar? Yeah. Shoot, I forgot him. I'll run grab him. Sorry about that. Oh, Close, yeah. okay? Yeah, well, as well, you know, if there's blood on him, we have to take him. I gotta get back to my kids. You know, you can leave whenever you want. It's just, uh, to be honest, it wouldn't look so good. I gotta be honest, Hugh. It's a mess. It's a real mess. You're good at fixing things. I keep hearing this about you. Is that right? I'm not so sure anymore. I will run and get you your cream and sugar. No, I don't need it. Uh, I, we can talk now and get this over with. Sit tight. It's no trouble. How about this? Yeah. You're really a grandfather? That's right. How come we've never met I you? Don't, I don't care about their order. Where have you been? You missed breakfast. I know you're upset with him because he took Steve's money, but he was only looking out for you and... Business. If you want to lecture someone, lecture Theo. Since she was three years old, Shirley needed... Shirley space. I'm here with her. This wall feels squishy. No way all this came from a storm. No, no way. I can fix it. Please don't be down here. <sighs> Father Mucker. Really, Dad? I swear I'm gonna see a face in that hole. <laughs> like most serious business. Do you hear that? Maybe rats. Could be what happened to the pipes. Hey. hey I'm um I'm a little early. He's uh he's looking a lot better now, right? Doesn't he? Guess so. You on the other hand. Thanks, Dad. Oh no, it's just you look a little uh the <laughs> And if I make it through today alive, I'm gonna have to pack this all up and find a new place to live. And I don't think Shirley is ever gonna talk to me again. I'm sorry. I should have made more of an effort with you. People fuck up. This doesn't have to do with Steve's money, does it? I'll combine these plans into one master blueprint, uh, draw up something that represents the actual <clears throat> piping, and then we'll find out how fucked we really are. The ghosts are making everything wet. Wet. Wet ghosts. They're cooming everywhere. Oh no. <laughs> all that, no. Where's all this ectoplasm coming from? Don't say that. For the hangover, make 
Shakes beer and tomato juice and power it down. Does it work? And not as well as a shot of smack. <laughs> so you're saying the best hangover remedy is heroin? By a mile. <laughs> I saw in the obit and I wanted to be here. You right. thought you'd what, exactly? <laughs> oh, man. Awkward. <laughs> There she is. What happened to you? Oh, I fell. <laughs> We're gonna make a tent over this whole area and then we'll bring the fans in. Master Blueprints? Master Blueprints. Was that right? Emily. What? Be safe down Old time step and the glad return. Think of her faring on. I, um, I was born 90 seconds before no. And, uh, she looked at me and she said, you go in there and you bring my brother back. Had a girl. She was always my big sister. <laughs> Probably ain't my place, but maybe she could use a little time away from the house. It's probably not your place. You know, my, my mother worked in this house. I was actually born here. Oh, is that right? My mom, she she never liked her house. And she'd be scattered, you might say. Towards the end, she'd wander into the woods at night barefoot. And she'd sleep out there sometimes, too. So, yeah, scattered. So, mom died, and, um... I met Clara when she got hired on working for Ms. Hill. We even got married on the grounds. Clara got pregnant. Our first real, real blessing. Ms. Hill made her keep on working, even with the baby coming. So the day comes, the doc comes, and uh, my little girl's stillborn. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was a dark time, my first one, and, uh, and Clara is a brave woman. And these nightmares, they had her down in a corner, shaking so bad I thought she'd seize up dead. She's cleaning the master bedroom up there. This is before Hazel passed. She's cleaning Hazel's room. She hears a, a, a baby crying. Here's another room, too. And she goes looking and looking. So I came back here with her one night, and that was my first little girl's cry. That that first cry, the one she never got to never spend a minute inside after dark. It worked. No more crying. No one acting scattered. But if you find your missus is acting scattered, maybe a little time away would do the trick. That was a good performance. Rod with us. I'll meet you there. Cheryl. Jesus, Cheryl. Today. Even today. Not everything's about you, Steve. Need a ride? One day, we'll wake up and it'll be too late. Stay the to... fuck out of my business. There it is. Stuck your hand. Right in the fan. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I told you to unplug the... I, I, I didn't. I oh. unplugged it. I, I want to help. It's okay. You've helped. Oh, that's why he has a bandage on. Yeah. <sighs> My little girl. <laughs> she did raise her. Still. Oh, Jesus. Please. 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 It, was, it was mom, it was mom and Nella. Yeah, hey, stop it. No, you didn't look at me. People see things, Luke. I know all about it. I write about it. Hell, I've seen things this week, but it's not real. It's not. Look at your shit together. You're gonna end up just like them, you understand? It's a sickness. So you've gotta be vigilant. And stop talking like a fucking crazy person. I don't want to bury you, too, you understand? Liv? Is 
Liv? You? You? You're holding a fucking screwdriver to my throat. No, I wasn't. We need to talk. You're... What? I'm what? I didn't know what this was. It's a footprint to our house, to our forever house. I'm not sleeping through the night at all. It just snuck up on me all of a sudden. <laughs> did good. Finish your drink. Say your goodbyes. How you holding up? You know, I'm him. I'm okay. But you don't have to feel crazy because sometimes... Big boys know the difference between what's real and imaginary. Isn't that right, Dad? You're doing so well. Hey, keep it up. Okay, just keep it up. You little shits are dead. Good Lord. I'm going to keep the children upstairs. William Hill, been missing since 48. And the tools were in there with him. That man, the scratches. I guess he had second thoughts. And I'm sorry I didn't listen. And I'm sorry I wasn't there. And it's the regret of my life. What? You fly safe. I can't find my credit card. My caterer's got to be paid. Did you tow my car? In here. You saw him. Where the hell is it? Luke's did did, done did something Kevin yesterday. take my goddamn wallet? You saw him, but you didn't want to believe it. Sure, he was looking at your. And then he. He wanted to have a smoke. He went outside uh, about an hour ago. like this one when, when, when we and I, I, I can I can fix it uh, I can I can fix it I, I can fix it yeah. I don't know why you won't help me Hugh I am helping you twice now you say that the house killed her I know what I said your daughter Shirley says she woke you up because she was surprised to see mom in the kitchen that's right and she says that you ran up the stairs to the uh the red room that door's been locked since we moved in so it was nothing Good. <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that. They've managed to make the opening of a door pretty. <laughs> like, it's like, oh my god. What is storytelling if not mystery boxes? No. Oh. I was just about to say, yeah, a door, a door being good. That's cool. But imagine blowing up five planets. Like, <laughs> yeah. Imagine opening five doors. Imagine <laughs> opening like, five, all the doors on five planets. Two, and it's five doors. It's not even a big door. It's a normal sized door. Imagine the lasers opened the doors on all five planets. There were very few spooks in that episode. Yeah, again, uh, it's, I'm just so much more in it for seeing everybody talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just talk. Yeah, oh, but... talking's great, but five planets, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Like, the modern day stuff is really good, but it's the early stuff where I'm like on the edge of my seat. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck happened? Mm -hmm. I gotta yeah, find out fair. what happened that set all this stuff know. in motion. I uh, assume they're all gonna go back there in, like, either the last episode or the second last episode. And pro I'm oh. guessing they're all gonna die. That's my guess. All of them? Yeah, I don't know. Um, all except the dad. Uh, I don't think... I don't think we're gonna get that many deaths, honestly. I'm, I'm basing this on the kit. That's, that's pure, like, hunch. And there's no really, nothing really basing that. I'm basing this on the fact that the, they found that just and this is I feel like the kittens were just like a very clear foreshadow, which like mm. I, I certainly want to think they're all gonna die. Yeah, I could, I could throw it back like almost too clear, like to the point where I might almost call that on the nose. <laughs> yeah, I mean like it's um But it depends on execution, of course. Like they, they find the kittens that don't have a mother, one of them dies first and then the rest of them die. It seems very 
uh, mm -hmm. explicit in what it's saying. But what if it was metaphorical death? Metaphorical. Oh, like something else happens to them. Like all. allegorical bad. death. Yeah. Cats get the fucking deserve. I mean, there's still time to blow up a few planets. <laughs> that's very I, true. I do wonder if they're gonna like burn the house down in the end or something. Uh, or... My hunch is that's what Luke's gone off to do. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. Luke might have gone off to do something as well. <sighs> we still don't know what happened with him and the little girl as a kid. That that's little girl true. he would see yeah. and he drew pictures of. Like I assumed yeah. his episode was gonna focus on that, and it, she's barely mentioned in it. I quite like the sure. um the opening that the cop is like super super nice, but. Uh, if you watch, all he's doing is just hoping that Hugh doesn't call for a lawyer, basically. It was just standard yeah. cop move. Because uh, when he goes to get his cream and sugar or milk or whatever, he's like super threatening, despite <laughs> he's just like, oh, can she, you, 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 see, you stay right there. It's like, it okay. Really? It's no trouble, like, okay. <laughs> and yeah, I think this episode has stuck the big ol' uh, seed in your head that um, the mold could, in a, in a narrative sense, explain the Ill mental illness for the family, being that it would have possibly exacerbated it on a oh, non-ghostly yeah. level. But, but obviously... in the mold, and that's what's causing everyone to go flumpy. I possibly. Enjoy, I enjoy like the mold. consistent attempt to, like, blur the line. Yeah, because of course, uh, they, they, they're pretty explicit in this episode, I feel, with, with that message when he's like, uh, yeah, my therapist says that's how people deal with stuff, but at the same time, it could be real. And Stephen says, um, mentally ill people see the shit all the time. I've seen it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. it's him rationalizing what he saw in episode six yeah. again. That's a huge, like, he's never admitted to seeing it before. That was like a big moment, I feel, where he said, where he's talking to Luke and he's trying to go, you know, you need to get this shit sorted out. I've seen it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, oh. Yeah, okay. I, th I think subtextually he was just talking about himself in that conversation rather than luke he was just raging yeah. at luke because luke's probably the the closest to going insane now out of all of them it was pretty high up there though i think she um fuck is now yeah after that <laughs> um i quite like the dad yeah i do too yeah, he's probably my favorite character in the whole thing i thought luke was <laughs> oh no yeah luke is uh, but he is as well <laughs> Hey, wait. It's, well, it's a really good selection to choose from. There's a lot to think about with Hugh about like what he says that his wife's ghost or whatever that maybe tells him to say and what he chooses to like reword or not say at all. She often advises him to go one way and he won't. She'll say stuff that he's <laughs> thinking and won't say. It's, uh, it's a really cool little dynamic. She's like the yeah. smart voice in his head almost. She's not saying anything well, that's the thing, right? to him. Like, is she an actual ghost pestering him with what he, like, like actually here? Or is it just another part of his conscience trying to well, tell I've him what to say? I've taken it as him, like, projecting his, yeah. I want to say, like, better, more reasonable side out into another voice. All of the all of the episodes that focus on a character have had a separate ghost story that isn't a ghost story. That's just a that's either not paranormal or it's not connected to Hill House. The only paranormal one was like Theo's handy hands, and like all of the rest of them. Yeah, so I assume that's his because uh, all the ghosts are very clearly dead. You can see they're dead. And I would have thought the ghost uh, story for his story was uh, Mister Dudley's whole thing with uh, hearing the voices. I guess. And... Yeah. yeah, but like. That's that's an actual Hill House one though. Yeah, I don't see why they couldn't be. Because the rest of them have been like a non Hill House ghost story, and I think yeah, they've they've all had a non Hill House ghost story in their episodes, I think. Right. Yeah. And then we've got um he's seeing um he's seeing the mother in his head, and she's clearly different from all the other ghosts they've seen, which are all very visibly dead. They've got like the grayed faces and the the weird eyes. Plus the 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 biggest disconnect for that would be I think the ghost of the mother is at, at, at Nelly's grave like clawing at Luke and trying to get him to go in and then she's right that bit back there talking to the dad and he'd be like why'd you do that? Mm. Like, yeah there's something spooky about the drawing him into the grave sort of thing it's like um yeah. she seems way too cognizant to be the, the, the same as the other ghost last thing I want to say is having been to a funeral like in the past couple of days that funeral was too real yeah lots of it I was super having big. similar thoughts watching it yeah it's surprising how many like the things are happening all at the same time and different everyone's different connections are all just you know one person moves from one to the next and you're like oh we we move away from that awkward thing oh now this oh fuck oh uh, oh and the, uh mm. also for you haven't said anything you fuck I, it's just good i don't know what to say it's good 
I'm, I'm just being careful with what I say. Yeah, we're almost I, there I, now. I think I'd say I'm expecting something a bit more optimistic than everyone dies. I see this either ending with everyone dies or like they blow up the fucking house. Like, I don't see another way out of this. <laughs> everyone oh, they blow up five planets. planets. I was gonna say, why stop at one house, Jake? Yeah, this, there's a whole city to blow up. I could see it with like the cycle ending. It's like, oh, it's all happened before, it happened this way before, and it's like they've essentially reset the house to infect the next people, you know? I don't. I honestly don't really know. I see it going a lot of different ways, and I still there's so so much I don't know. Um, I'm I I don't know if I can make a guess honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, I just hope it's not super fucking depressing. Who knows? I've got, like, allegorical hunches between like ghosts from the past and the fact that their relationships are all currently estranged and fucked. I do see like a big satisfaction like punch out of the house winning those like. So I I want to see like them begin to reconcile at least before the day is done they've just um unbricked <laughs> mr hill i think they've just unleashed a new ghost because like they heard the clawing from behind the blind mean and like his ghost was trapped in there and unbricking it i think is going to make him appear like actually in the rest of the house and i think he might be the big scary one or something dude ghosts can go through walls come on <laughs> <laughs> and because of the presence of the cane in there, I think he was the tall man. I'm not sure, though. I don't think... I'm not sure that... Maybe? I guess that is a very clear indicator that he was. That and he, like, came back for the hat that they found in the house. It's just... Yeah. It seems like a fairly natural connection. Yeah. With the time travel stuff, like, with, um... Now, like, going back through time when she, uh, becomes a big spook. First of all, why the hills actually died is play a big part in it, and we don't really understand that yet. I feel like... We may find out that they died trying, you know, essentially for the same reasons. Mr. Hill bricked himself up. That's very similar, like, you know, to... And, and then they say he had second thoughts. He was trying to scratch his way out. That's almost identical to Nell, like, hanging herself, but then realizing at the last minute that, oh, fuck, what, what's happening? Oh, my God. I've just been, like, hung by, like, these ghosts. And then, like... Yeah, hanged. So that, I'm hung. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's the same that's the same thing pretty much is um no they're different no hang and hung are very <laughs> different jay <laughs> they're different <laughs> yeah him being bricked up and then clawing his way trying to claw his way out afterwards oh like that that screams like oh the ghosts fucking killed him in the same way Wumbo. witness yeah. marks Wumbo's not real Come, yeah. Wumbo's not real he can't hit <laughs> 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 What's the day. picture to represent Wombo then? Do you think they would ah, fund a Netflix original series called Wombo? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Wombo. amazingly terrible. It's like the most dramatic and well realized and produced drama in our time. It's just called Wombo <laughs> with an exclamation I point. Being like, <laughs> being like Wombo is the name of like the detective. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what well, you're making me think of now is how you can make every piece of media better by taking the print, the main character, and replacing their name with Wombo. <laughs> Wombo the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs> the Haunting of Wombo House. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, make that edit. <laughs> these these intros are meant to set the tone. We're just like Wombo. <laughs> <laughs> You've been trying for two years and four months. Okay, we'll test your sperm for count and motility percentage. And how far away are we from your period, Lee? Very often, the genetic testing for the man will be coming. Oh, that sounds fair. <laughs> All right, sis. So... We gotta talk. Even when it was just a shape, Steve. it was so fucking threatening. Yeah, it's quite a neat spook, that one. You didn't have to break the house. I don't think he did. Me neither. So I want to ask you what you think, Theodora. Sorry. Suicides can cluster in families, especially twins. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. I got this. Just wait a bit. We'll see if he's using the car. Then call me if he does. We're really not going to tell them what we saw. I just want to help. Your mom's going to go to your Aunt Janet's in a few days. Stay a bit. Maybe a week. I could really use your help watching your brother and your sisters while she's away. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Of course you're safe with me. Mom. <gasps> Are you sure? I'm fine, sweetie. I'm fine. 
That's not Fortnite. He's not a holy family. No, oh, he's probably not gonna instantly OD. I'm looking for a beat up green Jeep with not one, but two Andy DeFranco bumper stickers and I'm looking for it where I know he used to score. What's going on with you and Lee? What do you mean? How's your marriage? <laughs> Kidding, right? Jesus okay, I wasn't Christ, well, I Dad, you're out of line. Whatever you need to fix between you and Lee, I really, I really hope you do. I swear to God, Dad. Candy, candy, candy. You'll be back at the hotel. Okay. Okay, sure. Pretty neat continuity wise with the Daredevil costume there. He, uh, mm -hmm. he couldn't get the, the regular red, so he goes with the black, which is what Daredevil. As before that. Good shit. He's a true fan. Yes. <laughs> yes he is. If he had the yellow one, that would have been a, a cooler little reference. Hmm. Nerd. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, leave me alone. Leave me alone. He's 90 days clean and he, he's your brother. He's, he's a good man. Oh, Steve, they're he's... not mutually exclusive. He's my brother, but he's a junkie. He's my son, you know? What am I? I, I don't know what I'd do if, if I lost him. Any of you. You can't lose anyone else. You know, and one day when you have children, you'll understand that. I'm never having children. And your kids are the best thing in my life. Everything I did, I, I did, did to protect, to protect you. us. I know. Yeah. Just like you protected mom. You left her there alone, and she threw herself off the goddamn staircase, and that was your best? Yeah, all right. One person that was supposed to take care of her didn't do a goddamn thing to get her help. I miss her. I miss her, too. The game room? The wet room? Upstairs. You know, I think a little paint maybe fix those drawers and she might really love it. I'm sure she will. If you really want this to be a surprise for your mom, I'd suggest you don't work on it in your room. I was just uh, coming to apologize. Wait. Not now. I can explain. I doubt that. Shouldn't you be packing? I know what it looked like last He pushed me away. Is this supposed to make this better? It wasn't even him. It's about you getting out of my guest house and off my fucking property. If you would just let me talk. I don't care what you have to say. Do you understand? You ice people out. You always have. I ice people out? Uh, have you met yourself? So I chose to live there to help try and keep you warm. You fucking suck at apologies. I am a fucking doctor. You're a fucking slut. You do not just get to shove me out of your life. Did you just punch me in the boob? Yeah. If you kiss my husband, that's what you get. You get punched in the fucking boob. And you get evicted from my fucking house. Amherst is on the way. Yeah, yeah, I, I know where it is, right? You guys are gonna stay there. We're gonna go to Amherst. It's a good enough spot for Nell. It's a good enough spot for Luke. He always wanted to do what she you did his whole you life. I think you you know, and you, mm -hmm. you just don't, you don't understand. So Our family has a disease that's never been treated because it was easier to listen to your crazy stories about an evil house. The whole fucking family is on the brink of a breakdown, seeing things that aren't there, hearing things that aren't. It's not the house. There's something wrong with our goddamn brains. Vasectomy. Right out of college. Before you met Lee, you didn't tell her. No. I thought I was being kind. I really thought that. You see, we're all fucking crazy. Just tell me what a shitty husband I was. Go ahead. I'm just... I'm just so sorry, son. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Mom? <laughs> Fill up some cans. Like, five cans. Five cans, you say? What are you doing? I'm driving. No, 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 no. This is my rental. He's not going there to kill himself. He's going to burn the house down. Well, that's a relief. He's in more danger now than he's ever been. You really didn't hear a word I said. Yeah, I did. Now you're going to listen to me. 
Our family is like an unfinished meal to that house, and your brother is walking right back into this the most dangerous place in the world for all of us, especially for you. For me? And you are the last person that should ever step foot in that house because of what you wrote and how you wrote it. And you walked by the man repairing the clock, and then you saw your mother looking into the twins' room, staring at their empty beds. I had that clock evaluated by a professional before we even moved into the house. You hired a slew of workers toward the end. Not for that clock, I didn't. Uh -uh. There was no man there, and certainly not one in old overalls with a handlebar mustache. That man wasn't there. I never built you kids a treehouse. What? Luke was in there all the time? How would I even have the time to build you kids a goddamn treehouse? Maybe he was already there. There was no treehouse. And I'm very sorry you have to be taking all this in right now, but you have to. Do you understand me? You have to, because your, your brother's life depends on it. I'm not perfect, you know. I know. Try again. I was really drunk. I swear to God. And you. the lights went out while we were down there, and I... I was um, in the dark that whole night, and I just needed Aya. You know what? Never mind. I'm trying to tell you. Forget I asked. We just told We've all been dealing, and, and we somehow managed not to try to fuck each other's Hey, spouses. that's not what this was about. I touched Nell's body the night before. What the fuck is wrong with you? You I'm sis, not making you excuses. Bullshit. I saw <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> I touched Nell because I had to know. You know what happens when I touch people. A part of you knows, it always has. And I felt nothing. And it spread, it spread everywhere in me, this nothing, until I couldn't feel anything anymore. I was just this dark, empty black hole. I tried to mourn at the wake and I felt nothing. And so I drank and I drank and nothing worked. I couldn't feel anything, Shirley. And then we're in the basement and the lights go out and I can't see and I can't feel. And I wonder if this is it, if this is what death is just out there in the darkness, just darkness and numbness and alone. And I wondered if that's what she felt and that's what mom feels and it's just numb and nothing. What if that's what it is for all of us? And then the lights came on and there he was and I, I reached for him because I had to feel something. I had to feel anything. I didn't see him and he stopped me, he stopped me. He took my hands and he said no and then I saw him and then you walked in. God, I'm so glad I did it though because it worked. I felt shame and I felt grief and I felt scared. I felt so fucking scared that I was gonna lose the only sister that I had left. That thorough. Fucking shame was so much better than that horrible, empty nothing. I can't, Shirley, please. I'm so sorry. 10 out of 10. Jesus. Possibly my favorite speech in the whole show. Yeah. It's amazing. That was, the boy. Of, um, that was the chick from the, the picture. Yep, the dressing. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that was her. That episode's good. <laughs> that episode's really good. Yeah, I'm blown away by this show. When you said um, it peaks with episode seven, I was like, oh, no, with episode six, sorry. I was like sort of expecting, oh, okay, so like, I guess it'll have a few problems after that. It'll go downhill. It'll go downhill half. <laughs> so far, it's like, no, it's like, like it's still up there. Like, I, I I enjoyed those episodes just as much as like you know they're not all done in one take. Sure. There's not enough. There's not as much like it wouldn't have taken as much to make them, but I think they're still just up to the same standard, you know. Yeah. No, I think they're all really highly rated. Uh, mm. I think they all. I guess I was expecting it to uh, attempt stuff that it fails to achieve, 
uh, when it after that. But it, no, it's just it's attempting less, but it's still achieving everything it's going for. Well, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see how it, it closes out. But that uh, the reason I love that speech so much is because I still remember on my first watch through when she catches them in episode six. I was like, how could you possibly explain that? Like what she's doing. I was like. Mm -hmm. I almost felt annoyed. I was like, really? On everything we have, you throw in this in too? And I was like, I don't feel we've set up that those two have any connection like that, you know? And, and so I was just, I was, I, what I'm saying is I was Shirley the whole time, just like, fuck you. Like, that was really fucking rude. And then, of course, I have all the information I actually need already to figure out what might have been happening there, especially with uh, episode three being the whole touch me thing to get the feelings of Nell out of her. He's never touched like a dead person before. Or I assume then. I don't think so. That probably no, is a good. Seems like a thing to avoid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if you remember when um, when Nell was trying to get her to touch where her husband died. Yeah. Very was against not it. Pleased. Mm. She she has there's no way to how do you explain it like first of all you need to explain that you have a superpower then you need to explain how the superpower almost backfired completely in when you touched a dead body of your sister. Like, these are all things, they all require their own fucking explanation on their own. Yeah. And all of it is to try and get to the point where you explain why it looked like you were fucking home-wrecking. <laughs> a, and yeah. You just can't really do it. Yeah, and every time she oh, tries... I was, I was kissing your husband because of my superpower, I promise. <laughs> and so she stopped. Like, she she needs to start the story somewhere every time, and every time she does, it sounds awful. So she, she's like, mm -hmm. okay, so I was really drunk, and it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. You know, like, the, you already, you're already like, you're going to use that as an excuse? Like, no, actually, it's it's just to set up yeah. everything. It, it takes ages. And yeah, so her speech where she just lets it all out is uh, amazing uh, to it's me. It's terrifying seeing the walls come down on top of that. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just this I... huge payoff. The reason it's not my favorite of like all the speeches is I prefer the the more subtle ones where because like, she's pouring her heart out in that, and it's like, it's good, but it's like um, all of the emotions are like worn on on her sleeve. There's not much like subtext to take in on that scene. In that scene, I feel I that's guess. what came before is the many times she's been trying to give explanations yeah. of it but yeah. she's given up at that point. Which, by the way, I found it interesting that um, especially with this episode, a lot of the Spooky tisms at this point should have been noted that they keep like turning up whenever people are arguing a lot of the time. Yeah. People mm. are having bad family tisms. Like well, it's uh, it's unclear exactly what the connection might be, at least for now. You could probably speculate. Nell specifically shouts the shit out of them when they're they're arguing with each other. It's like, huh. Because again, that's a jump scare. It, depending on how you contextualize it, I'm I'm not uh at all annoyed with it. Because it's it No, that one seemed uh it to me could seemed be. like Nell was reacting to them. Nell could be trying to do so many like if she's still her and she's still conscious, there could be so many like things she's trying to achieve with that. She could just be like in pain because of their arguing. She kinda get them to shut up. Relooking at the thing again. So like at first I thought, obviously I imagine some of you are similar, when she touched Nell's body that she had seen maybe how she died or who did it to her or yeah. a collection yeah. of nightmarish things. But no. Mm -hmm. It was the she for the first time experienced what it's like to experience nothing. Experience death. Yeah, uh, I she, think that's what it was. And something essentially impossible, which is as yeah. if uh, I could believe like yeah. all yeah, of. Because I, like I, like I had it in my mind that she like touches her and then starts screaming. I didn't really like. Yeah, if she touches her and then starts to comprehend it, I, I do like that. Yeah, she touches it. She slowly like her eyes widen, and then she uh, falls backward into the table and then starts crying and. I could believe that that's like all feelings getting taken away and then just nothing. Like when she said the, the lights go off and you can't feel anything, like the that's kind of nightmarish. And she said she couldn't see him, it was just a light that I don't know, I just I really like, it fully explains everything she did. There's no problem whatsoever. Yeah, it's almost like it was thought out from the start. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. her motivation Maybe. According to what her, was going on inside her head, but we the audience don't know. Yeah, but five planets. Yeah, That's yeah, but true. five planets. <laughs> five planets, five planets, five planets, That's pretty, five planets that pretty impressive. <laughs> also, this show has been doing it a lot. Some people make fun of it for it. Uh, the many speeches characters give. I hang on like everyone's words, though. I really don't mind. I'm really oh, interested. I, I think it's great. Um, I, I, I feel almost like the show knows it can do them, though. So it's like piling them on. Like, hey, look at the cool thing we can do. Like. I do get like the sense of oh okay we've got another speech because the show's really good at them. 
Well, I think it's the idea that uh, if you can keep somebody engaged for like five inter uninterrupted minutes of somebody telling a story, you've done a pretty good job. And especially when the actors are doing such a good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just letting them perform for yeah, yeah, yeah. a good chunk of time uninterrupted yeah. is really cool. I think they're placed very like appropriately as well. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like yeah. it's it doesn't feel like it's going too hard to try and force another speech because it knows it's good at speeches. <laughs> The show, yeah, yeah. The show um, I do, I do kind of tire of it a little because like it's so. They're like, all good though. That's it's, it, they dude, are. It's, <laughs> they're all great. They're all justified. Yeah, they have a lot to say to each other. It's my it's crack. Like I can watch them forever if they're this good. Yeah, Interesting with the the three car conversations. The first one is Stephen just rips into the dad. The second one is Stephen admitting that he's fucked up with uh, his wife and the third one is the dad being like okay like I i've listened to everything you said now to be serious the, the house is haunted <laughs> like is this not yeah, yeah. i wanted to point out I've been building up to that this so long it was it was neat that when that part when he started talking about that he was in the driver's seat yeah so yeah that was kind of fun. oh yeah that is really neat i'm wondering if next episode people are going to start seeing luke's ghost like or if he's going to still be alive now <laughs> to see yeah, so that that was the first scene. Like every other scene that there's been like a jump scare in or a big spook, it's been very blatant. Like, oh, this is a spooky scene. Um, you know, um, be, be tense in the scene. Something else I was going to say about that, I think, was actually knowing that at this point it's almost getting to be formula that we listen very intently to every conversation mm -hmm. and with the camera slowly zooming or staying on point and we're just like waiting for the climax of sort of the conversation and then suddenly ghost goes blah he's just like oh jesus yeah. christ because i think they knew at this point that we were all set in our ways of just staring and listening to everything that's mm. said overload of sensory information spook goes up 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 and they're like oh oh oh, oh. they're like blah it's like oh shit and it keeps happening every time she tries to explain herself it always some detail like when she said she touched nell's body and she's like what the fuck and it's like yeah, well, and, and that's that, that you need to explain all that, I guess. She wanted to find out, you know, and, and like the, the, the time you spend taking to explain that, you're like, oh, this whole time I was trying to explain why it looked like your husband cheated on you. Fucking hell. It's all so wonderfully gonna, crafted. Bad, so I'm just going to do what I usually do and just shut up. We've got two episodes left of the um, them in the house now, I guess, which is I'm hyped. It's like it's it's. It's um, it's a rare feeling of getting to the end of a show and like just being like, yeah, it's all been leading to this. I'm I'm ready for it now, you know. <laughs> I mean, obviously we can't talk about it as a whole yet, but uh, <laughs> since we're not able to start, you're eight episodes in. How does it rank with TV shows so far? Very high. I haven't watched a TV show this good. <laughs> uh, mm, long time. I mean, as a craft, it's probably up there with like on the top level at the point. It was like, yeah, they achieved everything. They're going like. Everything beyond this point is just like what you prefer. For the most part, just yeah, bullseye. But the funny thing is, like, even if um they were to complete, like, imagine the worst possible, like, the production values go to you know fucking one out of a hundred, and and the acting, everything in the writing goes to shit in the last two episodes. I would still be like, ooh, those first eight though. <laughs> like, yeah, like what what could be like the most insulting ending for this now? I don't know. I think if if it, we open at like a police station and then they go, we found them all dead. Sad. <laughs> from complete, like from completely different characters' perspectives, people we like. Ah, that's when Wombo comes in. Ah, so. uh, yeah, Detective uh, Wombo's on the case. Yeah, and he's picking up all the pieces. Well, like some other character arrives that we've not met before and just like come, saves them all. I was like, character. you're welcome. And then they leave. Well, they're yeah, they're, they're like, thank you, Carlton. And he's like, I'm always here for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is that uh, the hype you've got right now is like what I want back for season two yeah. again. I love that experience of being invested in a story. You're 90 days clean, Morlin. No, that means I'm going to burn a house up. down. Or five Check planets. Burn five right. planets down? Yeah, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's more exciting. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I wonder in the, in the writer's room where they were like, should it be four planets? Six planets? And JD was like, five. Five, five. that's the way. You know what? Well, no, no, no. If JD would take the thought of destroying six planets, he'd be like, whoa, that's a bigger number. Yeah, that, let's do that. <laughs> but he didn't think of it. They're all looking for like a promotion. They're like, seven? Five, eight? That's as high as he can count. Yeah. Well, like no, he, he, he can't count to five. He said three. And then someone went, well, what about five? And he went, What's I'm not that? sure how you got there, but let's do it. I, I like the idea that someone says six and he goes, that's ridiculous. 
Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna take the moderate position and just say five planets. Five, yeah, I mean, JJ, he's reasonable. grinning all smug and happy with himself, and they say that I can't temper myself. <laughs> should we should we build the audience's investment in anything on any of those five planets? <laughs> uh, My first uh, fucking video, I called the I called it Carson. I was under the impression Carson was blown up in those planets. I didn't realize it was Hosnian Prime. I was like, okay, what the fuck is Hosnian Prime? <laughs> Well, you know. It's like, obviously, that's weird. And everyone was celebrating that. It's like, oh, thank fuck they didn't drag it down with politics. Because that's what that is, right? Knowing the name of a planet is politics. Anyway, want to watch the next episode? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I want to talk about how fucking sequel trilogy is trash. No, wow. Why do you hate women? Uh, well, what have they done for me lately? There's women in Hill House acting, so, yeah. Do you know that? I... I CGI. Shit. Punched me in the boob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. Protect your kids. Netflix or a ginal series. Or a ginal, yeah. Oh. Pretty soon they won't be caught dead like this. Oh, they'll go full Theo on you. You can't prevent it. Well, you know, that one. She would never, not even when she was little. I wish I could just freeze them. Keep them just like this forever. You guys coming? Yeah. God, I'm so far. I've just realized how hyped I am. Anyway. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My friend is like, oh yeah, right. This is the this is the, like the second last episode of Hill House. I slept through most of it too, but it gave me the strangest dreams. My daughter though is terrified of them. I hope she moves past that. <laughs> it was a car accident, and one day he was there, the next day he wasn't, and I didn't really know how to handle it. Didn't even cry. Not even at the burial. My mom left me at home with my, my little sister, and I was sitting in the living room in my dad's recliner. Always made me feel so small sitting there. And I felt it all, finally. And I started bawling. It, it, the dam just broke. It had been sunny just before, and it wasn't supposed to rain. But, but, it, but it got, it, it got violent. So I cried harder. The hail came harder, too. I'd been through hail before, but not like that. One of the windows in, in my sister's room broke, and Janet shrieking, and I, I ran in there, and, and I could see it. It's about this big. And my mom came running in, and she was, she was bleeding from her scalp. I remember that just from running up the driveway. She got hit. She grabbed me and Janet, and, and she held on to us, and we rode it out. It just stopped. I thought it was my fault. When Daddy died, I made it rain. Abigail isn't real, Luke. Yes, she is. Tell Mom where Abigail lives. In the woods. I'll be in my reading room if you need me. Did you guys see the face? Which room is your reading room? The, the mold or the chemicals, the noise down there, I just, I, I spaced. I think someone's in the house. <gasps> I love what you did with the room. You try and try and keep them safe. And you can't keep them safe forever, can you? I had a dream a few nights ago during the storm that I lost my little girl. They're perfect, aren't they? So what if they was having a dream 
I mean, bad ones. If they were stuck in that dream, you'd wake them. Then you'd keep them just perfect. Just like they is. Wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> You're holding a fucking screwdriver to my throat. No, I wasn't. It just snuck up on me all of a sudden. But, um... I'll sort it out. Oh, slow down, kids. What if I dream that you kill us? What? You send us away, out into the dark, and my heart breaks right in half, and I can't feel anything happy. And what if I'm so sad and scared of the dark out there that I put poison in me? I poison myself for years and years until my blood turns into poison and my body breaks down. And it was you that killed us because you sent us out there in the night. Would you wake us up from a dream like that? Of course. Mom? <gasps> Are you okay? I mean, the kids are safe. It's, it's just in my head. No, I'm sorry. But if you're worried about your children, you don't let anyone tell you to relax. Especially someone who didn't carry those souls in their core. Feel them growing. Stand firm between the world out there and these little souls, because the world out there has teeth. And it is hungry, and it is stupid, and it eats and eats mindlessly. It doesn't care that they're innocent. This house, all I can tell you is that it's just as stupid and hungry as anything else. And my child is not allowed to step foot on this place. Not once. I'll pray for you, Olivia. I appreciate that. I mean, this is beautiful. You did this by yourself. Thought it might cheer you up. Mm. Mommy. <gasps> it's gonna be okay, Liv. You're gonna have to handle the kids. I won't let anything happen to them. It's not that simple. It is. You guys be good and take care of your poor, handsome dad for me, okay? Can I have the girls spend the night while you're gone? Like a sleepover. She can have my bed. It's fine, sweetie. Beautiful. It's not possible. I said hi. I'm gonna stay up Honestly. so late! Yeah. Yeah. Hugh says hi. Yeah. Guys, guys! Yeah. No, you, you have your hands full. I can, I can hear you, bud. Yeah. I, okay. Oh, so Charlie, I just missed you all so much. Are you dreaming too? What? You grew up so fast. You and Steve. Theo too. Kittens need their mommies and then they don't. I'm sorry. Who? Oh. Abigail. Tea party. Tea party? I know, oh. we've been so patient. But it's open. You found the key. We are the key. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you said Mom was at Aunt Janet's. No. How do you take your tea? Yep. Still a little hot. You're so beautiful, the three of you. You don't have to worry now, sweetie. About what? <laughs> it's, it's okay. Just a moment and then there'll be no more pain. She's safe. Drink your tea. Stop! What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, 
He's killing them. He's driving them into the dark. He's killing them. He's killing all of them. Shut up! He's killing all of them. I want to wake up. Then wake up. And find those little bugs safe in their beds. So dramatic. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it'll be awesome all summer long. I gotta get my cramp camera. Do you, do you know which bag I have my camera? Blue bag, still in the car. It smells weird, too. It's gonna be a long summer. Well, haven't you always wanted an endless summer? <laughs> Did you see this staircase? It's awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. And there are so many books in there. You guys can take books for your summer reading. Are you coming? It's all you. Oh, gee, thanks. You guys go on without me. How could we? There's a mom episode. Mm-hmm. The final Warp episode is Cody's mm -hmm. episode on Mrs. Dudley. <laughs> we finally have the whole story. Finally get the we finally get Black the Cops picture. uh episode. <laughs> Most of it is just in the station. He's just chilling. <laughs> a weird fucking house over there. There was a what at the hill house? Son of a bitch. So do we have the full picture of the first night now? Of the last night even? That's yeah. the last night. That's what we, we got. Yeah, we just uh, well, not quite. There's still half of it left when the dad comes back. Yeah. He goes right. back? Yeah, well, remember how it, there was three hours that he's unaccounted for? And if you remember when he left the kids and then came yeah. back, he was covered in blood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember him being covered in blood. I swear I should remember. No, that. he was he was totally he was covered, covered in blood. Yeah. 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 Blood. And then the cop came. Oh yeah, yeah, he fucking was, right, of course. <laughs> yeah. Jay, Theo, Rags, what did you gather from that episode? What point do you think it was making? Oh, there's a few that come to mind. I would say it's probably that you can't be too worried about letting go of things you love. Oh, I meant I mean yes to that. Um but I was more so like I would say the purpose of this episode is to fully inform the mum. Oh, all of her. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Learn to yeah, let yeah. Go of all that you fear to lose. Lots of choice dialogue throughout that episode. Um Yeah. She's seemingly more focused on the twins <sighs> than the other kids in terms of having to save them. Well, um them dead at the beginning. Well, get that I'm I'm setting this up, you <laughs> fuck. When she sees Shirley and she's like are you dreaming too? Like just just to see if do you need saving like they do? And uh, then she says, "You, Steve, and Theo, you all grew up so fast. Kids need their mommies, and then they don't." As if to imply, like those three will be fine. But I I have to tea party the other two. <laughs> yeah, but these two, they they're still in that stage. Yeah, and there's lots of lines like just at the end there. It's like, "Haven't you always wanted an endless summer, like infinite and eternal safety?" warmth care and togetherness if if uh, if they wake up i'm replaying the scene from the first one now where they're chased by uh, the, the scene you know the scene that they recreate and well they recreate a lot of scenes in this one but um the first scene um where she's at the door handle i want to watch that again from episode one where you see it from uh, steve's perspective and he looks and he sees the mom chasing him yeah. wow well, it's just her like shambling towards yeah, him yeah she's got a twisted ankle. but obviously it looks really weird from that one because yeah. we don't have the context it's like how memory works you um you don't actually remember, like, in video, you know, your, your memory isn't a video playback. Your memory is just Pieces. Remember, like, ideas. Yeah, like, oh god, zombie? Question mark? So when I picture that scene in my mind, I see, like, a full, like, the ring, like, ghost. Yeah. Um, yeah it like, really lends itself to that. Because, yeah, you can't see her face in it because it's in shadow. Like, when I pictured the scene in my mind, I thought, like, I, I, would, I was convinced that, like, she had hair all the way over her face. And, her face was covered in like a mass of like scruffy hair it's just a woman chasing them now when, he, when i look at that in retrospect but because of the context in which it's presented and the mm. fact that she's shambling like that it's like oh it's a ring ghost and like that's how i remembered it yeah yeah there's the recontextualizing something they just keep doing in this show over and over again it's really cool it gives you different experiences one of the opening scenes is her explaining like when her 
father was dead, how badly she took it, and how alone and scared everything was right up until her family was reconnected back together, like in a unit. Her mum came home, held them both, and everything went back to being safe again. The whole episode just keeps pounding that that's what's going on in her head. She just got to bring that family together. Red Room's weird. Yeah, I mean, look, just I, looking in it, and it's a single table with all of that, like, ghost flute. It just opens it. now is the thing. Also notice the inside is completely covered in the fucking yeah. mold. So if, if we're going with the idea that the mold has something or anything to do with what's going oh, on, yeah, then yeah, that yeah. makes it, like, the heart of the place. I assume it explicitly does, right? Because, like, well, you see, you not, you not only do you see the mold, like, around the house, you also see it, like, it formed a face in the wall, and it yeah. was there when with the Forever House, when the ghost destroyed that. Mm. I mean, it's like, even it's... if it's not explicitly doing anything, it's absolutely representative of something. Yeah, it was all underneath that um that vanity that Steve painted, and oh, yeah, yeah. that was the yeah. crazy ladies who was the one urging uh, the mom to do all that stuff. So mm. I, don't, also... I don't know how the fuck she got in there, or if if getting in there was easy, as it appeared to be. Why Hugh couldn't <laughs> in what, sorry? the red room. I or wouldn't, the, I mean, genuinely... When the ghosties told her where the key was. I don't know that the, the fact that the house at this point is all but confirmed to be some kind of entity, I wouldn't be surprised if the door is open and closed at the house's will. Yeah, that's what I was kind of that's working with, I guess. It lets people yeah. in at, at their whim. Like, the fact she says, we are the key, makes me think that, like, certain people can get in, certain people can't at certain times. Like, it's all dependent on what the house wants, I would assume. Does that mean maybe we've seen scenes in the Sound in like the red sentence. room? <gasps> the sentence did have an ending. We have. They were in that episode. No, as in, <laughs> not what I, you know what I mean. Like ones where they're in there non-explicitly. It could just be somewhere else in the manor. Just a thought that occurred to me. I don't think so because like it is very like it's got that black mold all over the walls yeah. and it's um like it's quite clear. True. But it can the mold and shit can like change shapes. <laughs> but I don't think we've ever seen it move. I've seen. I think we've seen it grow. No, and sure. that, but uh... Carla Gugino, I think her name is. But uh, the actress for the moment is so good. She she does yeah. um she does like loving, caring, and and warm while being completely unhinged at the same time. So well, it's a wonderful world for and where like the unhinged like crazy characters, even them, even they are like incredibly well informed. I really yeah. wasn't expecting that to be a focal episode for her, by the way. I was like, I was ready for, the, for it to be, this is where everyone is now back in the house. Yeah, I think everybody was expecting it to be that, but it's, uh, they had. Because um... a part of me was thinking that it would be, you know, continuing with the current stuff, but then I was like, man, two whole episodes where they're just in the house? Like, I don't know about that. So... Oh, no, I assumed it was going to be split 50 50, so it's an episode where it's like half what's happened, half like on the first night. And then that continues, you know, like, it's it's like part one and part two of both the last night and the night now in the house. I thought that the 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 the, uh, the spook with the the two dead kids in, in the future and um, when the kids start explaining how they could possibly die in the future is fucking creepy. Mm, yeah. yeah. Also, the great actors. You guys did see the fucking the the dead guy in the wall of the kitchen, right? Um. Well, does anyone know what Jay's talking about there, Theo Rags? I noticed you calling it out, but I didn't <laughs> see it myself. So, um, <laughs> I get—I I mean, that's close enough for us to just tell you. I think. This yeah. Is, this has been this has been happening all season. Yeah. I wouldn't what, be really? surprised. Some of them, some of yeah. them I've caught, but some of them. Let me show you one of the most blatant ones that I was like, "Holy shit! How could anyone miss this?" All right, I'm ready to see. Oh this. shit! I didn't oh, even I remember that because I was so I remember when I saw him carrying them. I was like worried that the actor would hit his head on the wall <laughs> carrying him out, <laughs> and so I was staring at his head because I'm like, "Oh, don't hit that kid's head." Nope, didn't see that at all. Yeah. There's like actually, I've been taking notes for every episode. Wait, is, that one in, one. is that one in that first image? Can you, is the one... one with them in the masks? So, so oh, the so the you can't spot the one in the masks? Yeah. Anyone else? Behind the cop. Yeah. Oh, that's a person! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> and again, another reason, so with rewatching, loads of this shit's happening in the background. And they're all yeah. still... Nice and subtle. And there's a, there's a fuck on. Yeah, there's like, it's, there's it's articles bad. that show all of them. <laughs> And I have timestamps for almost every in the background at Anakin. I have timestamps for almost every episode. When I was when I was seeing the scene uh, of like the guy in the background in the kitchen, 
I was like, what is like? I noticed him as soon as this it cut to like the scene with him in it, and it was like watching it, it was like I don't understand how any could one could not notice that. <laughs> like when when uh, when I asked, oh, did you guys see the face? And no one answered. I assumed like the re the silent reaction was just like, yeah, obviously, shut up. We're trying to watch the thing. <laughs> like how could you miss that face? It's right there. So can you see? Oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> There's there's actually a lot of those uh, where they're just standing in like doorways and shit. Oh, you already have all those screenshots. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I only took a few myself. I'm getting some for a, for a website, but I don't recommend you guys oh, go searching until. Fucking... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking. Imagine effort. being the fucking like. Yeah, we need to stand. We need you to stand and look menacing in the background of the show. Well, <laughs> I have to imagine with a lot of these, they were like, "Come on, how's someone not gonna see this? It's too obvious." And it's like, "No, you're right." Maybe <laughs> well, it is. It is that uh, that gorilla thing, right? Look, count the players, and then the gorilla walks yeah. past, and only half of the people ever see him. That one's nice and creepy. Oh, oh that's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, this one I definitely saw that one. Yeah, I saw him down there. <laughs> Why didn't you say but nothing? It, but like, it's the focal point of what we're supposed to be looking at, and he's there. Whereas in these other ones, it's yeah. in the background, or it's not at what you're you know, you're supposed to be looking at. That I thought you guys would pick up on. I, there's a long shot of just zooming into these two while she's talking, and you can just see that girl in the background. It's like, eh. but yeah, it's really cool that they did this. I'm already <laughs> planning to rewatch this sometime pretty soon but thanks for the extra incentive i know right <laughs> <laughs> oh it's very rewatchable super consumable this this season that's why the I fact that there's a second the season the is like ooh, praise and critical coming in but uh it was definitely this episode that i've noticed holy fuck they need more variations of the main theme for sure yeah. Well, yeah, because it's the same one all the time. And There's I a like couple. It, but... Yeah, I like it too, but fucking hell, it can't come up in every single conversation that someone has with someone else. It's like this is. It gets a little bit absurd, and all. All I think you need to do. I say this as if it's easy. I know it's not, but get some individual themes going. Get ones for um each character. Each character. Well, I mean that is it. that is easy to like that is easy to like decide. You know. Yeah, like, it, uh, as a decision, it's obviously work, but yeah. can't fill. Every single time you need a song with the main theme. Especially if they've got whoever made the main theme. They seem to be knowing yeah, what they're exactly. doing, so use them. <laughs> well, you can, do, you can do variations. Yeah, that too. I've noticed the heaps, because some hypochondas in the music and, like, scores and stuff, but, uh... Well, maybe if you try being invested in the fucking story. Well, what if you pretend it's what you wanted? Oh, yeah, okay. Mm. Still can't believe that's a thing someone actually said. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sound strategy. Why didn't we think of that earlier? We should have thought of that ourselves, really. Yeah. I do think that episode is strong, though I think a little bit too much of the time code is stuff we've already seen. Um, yeah. yeah, there was a bit of, you know, a little bit of retreading. Well, repeated, yeah, repeated yeah. information. They'll, they'll show, like, how a scene... Uh, was was reached from her POV, and then the scene will continue, and it's like, oh, oh, show, sure, we've seen this, we know what happens, it's okay. Yeah, anything else? Because I guess we'll just, the best time to talk about the show will be once we finish just, 10, so. Yeah, I'm ready to mm -hmm. progress and get this 10th one out. Yeah, boy. How exciting. Uh, I'm ready. All right. Sure. <laughs> also, 70 minutes. Not so long, going to bed. We finally, like we've almost reached the power level of being a movie on its own. Die. Okay, so that's the house, but where's the hill? Or a pony. Not a pony. This isn't working. It could be a pony. Uh, Something oh. was moving. Congratulations, Theo. The <laughs> oh. <laughs> if there's a pony in there, it's, it's in the game room. The what room? Spook so they all have like their own room. Oh, I'd have a cum room. <laughs> it's full of cum, is there where you go to you, cum? You, you walk in, all the black mold is everywhere, you're oh, like, oh. That used you know, to be white. You know in The Shining when the, the blood falls out the elevator? It's just no. cum. I want, <laughs> cum. I want a cum elevator. No. <laughs> oh yeah, Dad, you know I was playing in the cum elevator? Don't be silly, we don't have a cum elevator. <laughs> I haven't had cum elevators in houses for ages. <laughs> it brings up all the cum from the basement. <laughs> oh. I am home, I thought and stopped in wonder at the thought. I was gonna cook. I know, but she wants fries. 
All the fries, nothing but fries. Mm. Oh. I always said I'd never gonna do a, a follow up to Hill House, and I, I think this is why. I, some houses are born bad. Too much? Hmm. It depends. Where are you? We know Luke bought the gasoline. And oh, honey. We're about to go inside. You said yourself you're never gonna publish it. I do, though. To see it, to really see it. It was a house without kindness. Not a fit place for people or for love or for hope. Dad. It's okay. Come on. Fear. Look at me. Fear is the relinquishment of logic. The willing relinquishing of reasonable patterns. I am home. I am home. But maybe with the two of us. A ski boy! I can't say what happened after the door closed. I don't remember how I got out of the house. Because you haven't written it yet. I mean, is anything real before you write it, Steve? The things you write about are real. Those people are real. Their feelings are real. Their pain is real. But your life is plastic. You are a plastic parasite. You don't remember how you healed our marriage or made our baby because you haven't really seen it, have you? You haven't shot it out in prose. Oh, she's kicking. Oh, she's hungry. Will you lose your mind? Like your mother. Never clean. Never really clean. You're thinking this is what I did with your money. I mean Steve's money, let's be real. I put it in my arm in some alley and maybe I died there. That's good. I won't. Baby, you already did. <laughs> it's the little girl with the runny egg. Eyes. <clears throat> uh, Steve, what? that's the thing about starting your own home. They just never tell you. It's not like buying a house, not even a little. I didn't sleep for two years, and mine was pre-owned, too. I've got all the makings of a mean martini in my room and want a nightcap. I enjoyed the conversation, but I'm going to say goodnight. That's not what you said, though. What you said. Let's see what kind of martini it makes. You walked out of the bar, crossed the lobby into the elevator, and you had that martini, didn't you? The bills were screaming, and the children were screaming, and your husband just drifted out of focus, didn't he? It was gross. You were married, and you were pushing. Don't lie. That ring closed the deal. You went upstairs with me because of the ring, because the ring meant. You had as much to lose as I did. And that was a calculation. You got dressed, and you flew home, and it was like nothing happened. You got away with it. I'm a good wife. I'm a good person. You never did it again. But you never told him, did you? So righteous. You don't want to look at it, do you? Underneath, she is a horror. And we pickle it and paint it, but it's still death. Shirley. <laughs> When 
was a child, my mother spanked me for throwing a rock through a greenhouse roof. For the only time in my life, she hit me. Just once. It was all she could take. And then never again. But a simple rock through some glass taught me so much about my mother. Taught her, too. And after thinking about it very seriously, I went out and did it again. I don't feel anything. That's okay, man. Take it. No, I don't. I knew a man once, so we built a wall to keep it all outside. That silly man thought his wall would keep them out, but there was just enough room for him and them. And his voice left him, and he scratched, whimpered. His fingers were shredded on his own bricks until his scratches just sounded like rats in a wall. And when he woke up, it was tall. So tall. No. 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 Leo. Sweetheart. You're awake. Oh, I've missed you so, so much. Your big boy hat. Oh, I, um... We're so glad you're finally here. Go. I'm sorry, Mom. I... No, don't you apologize to me. It wasn't your fault. Never once. Go. Why does she keep saying that? I don't want to be dead. I. But you want to be in here. No, I, do I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I feel like I've been here before. We have. Everything's been out of order. Time, I mean. I thought for so long that time was like a line, that our moments were laid out like dominoes. Our moments fall around us like rain. <laughs> or snow. Or confetti. <laughs> Mom says that a but a house is like a body. This room is like the heart of the house. No, not a heart, a stomach. It was your dance studio, Theo. It was my toy room. It was a reading room for Mom. The game room for Steve. A family room for Shirley. A tree house. But it was always the bedroom. On different faces so that we'd be still and quiet while it digested. I don't know how to do this without you. I learned a secret. I'm scattered into so many pieces, sprinkled on your life like new snow. I'm so sorry our last words were in anger. They weren't our last. I'm sorry that I didn't answer the phone. But you did. So many times. I'm sorry. Wouldn't have changed anything. I need you to know that. I loved you completely. <laughs> and you loved me the same. That's all. The rest is confetti. The first was young Miss Crotton. She tried not to let him in. He stabbed her with a corn knife. That's how his crimes begin. The last was Baby Grotten, all in his trundle bed. He stove him in the short ribs until that child was dead. Stay away. Forgive a girl for being lonely. Nothing sadder than a cold bed. Everyone is home. You've changed so much. I still had you with me. No oh, love. That wasn't me. That was just you. And I held it so hard. I didn't have arms left for the kids. The monsters got through anyway. They're out there, and we're in here, and the children are finally safe. But no, no, they're, they're, they're not. You kept them from me. It's to keep them safe. You took them, and you hurt them, Hugh. And they suffered. They did. 
They all do. Even if they're, they're, they're broken or addicted or joyless, or yes, even if they die, we have to watch it all because we're parents. It's a horror. It doesn't have to be. I saw our daughter dance at her wedding. Her smile was like a light and it was reflected in everyone's faces. He created a new star. Stars die. They explode to death. And if you could reach up with some great hand and pull them down just before they burst, you would. Yes. This is our forever house. Nothing bad will ever touch them ever again. Nothing good will either. I won't let you take them away again. They'll die. If they will die if they stay. They're dying now. Our babies are dying. Let them go. I'll be alone again. If you open that. to you that I will keep forever. Look, stay awake. Stay with. Start the car. Deep breathing. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Probably best you didn't say anything to them. Dad, what did I see? Lydia? Liv? I don't know. We were looking for... I can fix it. I can fix it. Put it down. No, I can fix this. Why are you even here? Our daughter snuck out of her bed tonight and we thought maybe. No, 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 <laughs> oh no. I didn't know. Mommy? Honey? Burn this house to the ground. Horace, he can't. She's still here. I'll carry her body back through the woods. I'll bury her by the cottage in the garden that she loved. We'll say nothing. You understand, Hugh? She barely left our house her whole life. We kept her out of the world to keep her safe. We're the only ones who would even know to. We won't say anything about Olivia. And your kids, they don't need to hear anything else or remember their mother in any way but the way that she truly was. And we can protect that for you. If you keep this house, keep us on. Keep everyone else away. Don't let it take anyone else. Never again. Let it starve. But leave it here so I can see her. It's dangerous. I don't care. This is where she is now. I'm her mother. I won't leave her here alone. I wish you would have told me. Some things can't be told. You live them, or you don't. I'm sorry, Dad. This is all yours now. The house. I was so lucky to be your dad. ghosts since I was a kid. Since before I knew they were even there. Ghosts are guilt. Ghosts are secrets. Ghosts are regrets and failings. A marriage can be haunted and I let that happen to us and I'm so sorry, Lee. You're scaring me. I'm asking you to love me for the next few minutes and it, it might be the hardest that you've ever had to love me. 
Six years ago, I went to that conference in Chicago. I wish I'd been a better son. I wish I'd been a better brother. What are you saying, Steve? I thought that wall kept us both safe, but walls don't work that way. Walls never work that way. I will stay. All of that, I just want to fix this. Fear is the relinquishment of logic, the willing relinquishing of reasonable patterns. We're here. We're here, Claire. And the shame. Love is the relinquishment of logic. This old house, she's quite the key. The willing relinquishing of reasonable pattern. But we cannot meet it halfway. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House. And those who walk there walk together. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So I'll just uh, rip the bandaid off there. I don't think that's a good ending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not satisfied with that. I forgot how unsatisfying that fucking ending was. Oh, yeah. Um, I just test my feelings more, but I don't think I'm. I need to like think so, more on it. I don't know. I oh yeah, not, well. No, I am not satisfied. I the, yeah. I do not feel the catharsis that I yeah. was. I can agree with that. This, this I is feel what. Like I could, a different the, there uh, there's some real like mixed messaging in this yeah. we've got we've i don't even this is going to be the longest part where we talk because <laughs> so, so that's it that's the haunting of hill house now half of us here knew that episode 10 is where it kind of falls off a cliff unfortunately every yeah. other episode is pretty much either really strong or mostly strong. So something to keep in mind, which is, this is going to keep coming up as we talk about it, there was originally a much darker ending. Tragedy complete. I'm pretty sure if you go look for it, something like all the characters did originally die, but the director, when essentially creating it, when filming it, when doing it all, was like, nah, it's too sad. We're going to make a happy ending. I don't want those like, oh, it's fucking sad, everyone fucking yeah. dies. It's like, I didn't want that, but I didn't want like this. I'm this down is for just a like... happy ending, in fact. I think that's that's what it felt like. I was leading up to as people like reconcile, but that's not. Well, I what think it's absurd. I think yeah. it's absurdly happy. There's yeah, way I, too yeah. much. This is a case of they've made they several made decisions with the goal of being like, what a fun, happy time we all ended on. And I'm sitting here like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, like, oh, Hill House is great. It's like, no! No, no, it's no. <laughs> Well, so that's... <laughs> really? There's so many ways we could start talking about this. So, like, the two categories I was gonna say would be, was it the ending we wanted? And then how well did they do the ending they wanted? There's, like, the two ways to break it down, so I don't even know which one you want to go with first, but let's say we all were happy with the, the broad strokes of the ending, as in everyone lives except the dad um and nell of course and the, and the mum and the and the thing with the dad let's just let's just, i guess we should go through mechanically what we were dealing with with this whole season because um wheel building wise i kind of think episode 10 does a terrible job of explaining to us how the fuck any of this works yeah yeah, yeah. um i'm like, i'm so left very confused by a lot of that i was hoping for a more concrete explanation of what the house is the best well, we can me, see it for an origin point was when Poppy was saying she was she was like taunting the dad while he was on the floor about how a guy came into the house and killed the whole family. Apparently, she said, yeah. "Yeah." So, so is that where the original family died and became spirits, and then the Hill family came after, and they've got a story that I guess we'll never really know. And then these guys were after them. I I felt like the best thing to do here. You don't want to pull a Dead Space three and then try and explain everything and just be like, oh. That oh that's how oh okay yeah we like, don't need huge I, I detail. Didn't want, I want the mechanics of the house and how it works to be consistent and interesting, <clears throat> but I don't need an explanation as to like the yeah. origins and how it got started. Almost as if the house is just. Well, I'm I'm more than satisfied with the idea that the haunting start when there was several people were murdered on premise. The house became haunted yeah. at that point. It's like a cool. Classic. Yeah, classic I'm idea. fine with that. Now. Mm -hmm. 
what does it do? It's like, so it's a house that when you're in it, it, it taunts you, fucks you up, makes you see things, and makes you afraid of stuff, until it then, like, contrasts that with the red room being the thing you want, and it makes you really, really happy, and then, like, at your happiest and most comforted, it'll kill you, and that'll be it eating yep. you, right? And then you turn into a ghost, which it'll then use to spook f future people. That, to me, is fine. Unfortunately, that doesn't account for a shit ton of things that just happened in episode 10. Yeah, because they just all get teleported into the room almost. Well, th I have and a theory. Steve, he just walks in there because it opens up. Like, my theory is that what I just said is possibly what it was when it was originally constructed and written, and then they changed it all at the end to be quote-unquote happy, mm -hmm. and now it's just fucked everything up. I guess we should probably bring this out, because this is the biggest flaw of the show, as far as I'm concerned, because I can get over will building fuck-ups. Um, I don't even know. Me and Fring have talked about this before, but I can't remember. Well, we'll just see how this goes. I was comfy with the idea that the mum was dead the moment she died. There is no mother anymore. She's just a the house using her as a puppet, like her memory and, and everything yeah, else. Yeah. I, I way prefer that. That was but my apparently, understanding of what was happening. Apparently that is the mum. And that means that she's not only murdered Nell, but she actually got the dad to kill himself by essentially holding the children hostage. She's horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, she's a bad person, but the show wants to kind of treat it like, oh, look, the family, you know, part of the family mm -hmm. unit back together. It's like, but she's bad, though. Dude, she's the, like evil. Yeah. She, the, uh, she never the, recognizes uh, what she did was terrible. Like, she never, she never like says that oh yeah what i did was like fuck the shot me. of the dad returning to her and nell fucks yeah. me up because yeah, nell right. nell was killed and is trapped there with this person who killed her like it's <laughs> yeah yeah whatever happened to her what does she not care about her husband anymore is he just gone well, forever like the, the what, idea is that, that she wants them to be with her forever in the house right so she as far as she's concerned haha i have the, she likes the husband he'll be there forever but it's the conversation they, they probably shouldn't have done it this way where she's like no they they live here forever happy if you want your character to believe that is true that's actually going to work better than her realizing that's not true which is what happens in the conversation he says no nothing good will happen to them here and they'll die here. And then she switches to, I don't want to be alone. Nothing bad will ever touch them ever again. Nothing good will either. They'll die. If they will die if they stay. They're dying now. Our babies are dying. Let them go. I'll be alone again. <laughs> So it's like, oh, so we have dealt with her motivation being strictly that she thinks it's better for them to die here. She now realizes that it's not, but still, I don't want to be on my own. It's like, what the fuck? It's the weirdest, like, hard pivot right at the end. I don't understand. It seems it. rushed. Do they feel like they needed more, like, big reveals, big hard-hitting, like, changes in perspective to recontextualize stuff? Is that what they were, like, is that what they wanted? I'd have to check, but, like... It's not hard for me to believe that Luke died in the original script, considering what he does. Like, injecting rat poison into your veins. Yeah. I feel I like you're gonna be dead. about rat poison lethality. Uh, <laughs> well, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what you mount, but... It's still hot that... in that syringe. I'm I would sorry, say, I guess, like, it's probably enough yeah. to kill you. Even if we just talk from the perspective of, I guess, internal consistency. Like, it didn't take much in terms of just sipping from a tea that had been poisoned with rat poison for yes. Abigail to yeah. kill over. And so, putting it directly into your blood seems like it would be Directly into your bloodstream? Like, jeez, man. I, I will admit, up until this point, I had assumed that he had got some heroin, injected it in, and then just... Then what? I assumed that the needle was heroin, and he'd just eat... <laughs> no, it's, it's I, I had assumed... I had assumed that he had... The, the, the needle was heroin, and he'd eaten... <laughs> For fuck's sake! Yeah. I'm watching the circles now. Um, I had assumed... The the needle was heroin, and he was he just eaten the rat poison. Um, Does Theo not need to wear her gloves anymore for some reason? Right, so that's another that's issue. Weird. They're doing it's thematically on point, quote unquote, Symbolic but it, it fucks. Right. Yeah, it yeah. fucks with mechanically. So she's like accepting and open to people now, and it's like, but that wasn't why she was closed off. It was because it gives her a flood of feelings that she doesn't have as her own. Yeah. The idea that she's like, yeah, I'm cool with touching anyone now. It's like, no, that's not. No, 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 that's no. That's not. Yeah. That's that's not. Sense of identity in like a year if, if it's that. based if it's based on a novel i assume the novel has the original no, no it's this isn't literally very different th this is unrecognizable compared to the novel i thought it was just the ending that people said was different from the no, no no all of it the 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 it's a closer adaptation to the owen wilson uh liam neeson film the haunting from 2009 than this is all this has is the names um eleanor is the main character in in the book and nell is the name of 
Eleanor, you know, unless the therapist is named after the main doctor in, in that story. The story in that's completely different. There's a, there's a scientist who wants to study people's sleeping patterns in a in a house that's presumably haunted. That's the storyline for the haunting, as far as I know. Yeah, I just want to rewrite the last episode. Like, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Do something else. Unfortunately, I, would, I, I kind of feel like all you can have is a bad ending. Like, unfortunately, I don't, yeah. You know but I mean? we can we can have rays of sunshine. But we, I, it has to be more people are gonna die. Fucking yeah. Luke is so dead. Like, uh, I don't. Yeah, he's super duper. Dead. Events transpires, yeah. Which do. you know, Luke is my favorite character. But yeah, he, he yeah. Had, if you want him living, you're gonna have to really work something else oh, out. Still if you want him to live, don't have him in jail. Rat poison. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> don't have him do that. That part the no no like i still want it to be cyclical i still want their fate to show why it was happening in the first place like i'd want them to die and then suddenly be filled with a longing for like more people there and it then shows oh and they're now going to trap the next people in you know and then it shows there wouldn't ever um, be any next people though nobody like there wouldn't be next people if all of them die there it's going to be pretty hard to sell the mansion that's yeah mm. but you also know. Rip characters all, all you'd get there is people just wandering in for a laugh or what mm -hmm. have you. So my biggest issue is with the mum, because I think it destroys her character. Mm -hmm. A big issue is with all the world building, because I don't think... We'll go back to that in a sec. The ghosts just don't make sense in terms of how they work in the season. But um, possibly the like, most incompetently written part to me is the Dudleys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it blows my mind that they have this kid, and they do reference them throughout the season in, in, in cleverish ways. One of the, the best yeah. ones I was going to mention at the end was um, when he talks about the stillborn baby, he describes it yeah. as our, our my, firstborn. My, fir my first one, yeah. I should yeah. Totally know that as well. It's, it's nice little little hints that they have a kid, but I'm sorry, you want me to believe that they have no public record of this child despite being yeah. that old. Yep. That's, that's um, the, yeah. she's home, yeah. She was homeschooled, home birthed, and just as far as the earth knows, she doesn't exist. <laughs> That's quite convenient. You, you be the only one who know, and it's like, what? She also you know? wanders out to the house and, you know, yeah. hangs out. So it's not just that, though. Yeah, because the very night that Liv decides she's going to kill the twins, or wake them up, whatever, she happens to sleep over for the first time, and the parents mm -hmm. have never seen her before, and they don't know she exists. Yeah. Like, so many things have to be mm -hmm. completely broken in order for that thing to happen. And you might be wondering, like, so, so why is it so broken? It's like, because the whole reason is to prevent Hugh from destroying the house. We have to make a reason for him to allow the house to exist but, instead of like, bulldozing it. I don't even need that to stop him from destroying the house, because Luke tried to destroy the house and it didn't work. Just have him do that and then go fuck it and run. He's mm. pissed at the house because it's killed his wife, right? That, that, that's, that's the whole thing, and he thinks that anyone who goes there is going to be potentially killed or, or tormented, whatever. So... It would make it would follow that his goal now is to literally just bulldoze the place. It's a nightmare fuel place. I, I can believe his character wants to do that, but the show presents it as he wants to, but the Dudleys are going to stop him because they have leverage. Which, by the way, they watch their daughter having been poisoned to death, and then like in seconds they're like, "Hey, let's make a deal." Yeah. It's like what? Yeah, no, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> it is absurd and it's rushed and it's annoying because it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I don't know how I, I feel about the room being everybody's own thing like you'd think it'd be really difficult for you to have everybody i imagine that room be totally different than everybody else i'm cool with the house fucking with them to make them like the opening credits yeah, like, right yeah. how did they physically get in and not no, because the well, they show shots of them entering all of these rooms. They're never the red door. They're always like a normal door, and so the people yeah. entering them think it's the normal. The only like I just see it as from what Nell said about the stomach. It's just that's where it's consuming them, um, making them really happy, contrasting with everything else in the house, and that's where it like feeds until it's gonna kill them. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so everyone's why happy. Does the house there. want that. We have to head cannon that because the house. All we get is it's a stomach and it feeds on X, and you're like, what exactly? And it, it's just when it shows them, they're always content in these rooms. These are what they want, and so it's like, does it feed on that then? It's like, yeah, but okay, well then, so why, why does it, it just make them happy all the why time? Why does it then kill them? <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say. Why? What? What does the killing part do yeah. exactly? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I, I feel like. This, this, I feel like that's the least of the worries, that, like, there is enough to headcanon there. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, I no, there would know. be, if not for multi-layers, so the house is like an entity, then it has these ghost spirit people like the tall guy and the whatever who run around spooking people. Like, that seems to be their only purpose. Then we also have Poppy and a couple of other ghosts that actually talk to you and interact as if they're individual ghosts that make their own choices, unless that's also the house. Then we also have Liv, who's this 
like fully independent ghost who has her own plans as if she's like the boss of the house. And it's the only one who doesn't mm. look dead because reasons. Then we have ghosts who like are just standing around. I don't know if like again, I think it's really cool production wise, but now narratively I'm like what what's what's your uh, you just watching people, well, I guess? And and there's like a, and there's differences between the same person when they're like cuz there's Nell Ghost, just normal Nell Ghost and then there's Bent Neck Lady Nell Ghost. Oh, right. Neck Lady, that's that's same another issue live, now. Like to live uh mm -hmm. I mean, you said it before, like, who was the person who destroyed the Forever House in the funeral home? It's like, that was Liv. Yeah. That was her. The big it's like, wait, so, yeah, she had the massive head wounds. That's her, too. It's like, why are they different versions of the same ghost? And then why is there, like, hidden out in the, the room, uh, you know, where they're having the tea party? Like, what's that yeah, about? Yeah, because <laughs> all these things could potentially be answered if we had something foundational to work from, as in, like, what projects them and what, what's the motivation of the thing projecting them. The many shots we have of Poppy being in and around Liv, she randomly reverts to, like, the old spooky version. But why? Mm -hmm. If Yeah. It, is that for us? Because, like, obviously it's not for Liv, because Liv doesn't even see several of them. So, like, what what's... What are we doing? What's the goal? Is it just to spook us, I guess? And what, what do the ghosts do? Do they just, like, sort of well, meander around? And you've so got, go, like, crazy ghosts, and then you've got normal ghosts. To go back to the Dudleys, I described the end of their story as actually, like, cringe. Like, the, yeah. the, <laughs> the idea is they realize very quickly, and very they're just okay with it, that their daughter has died in the house, and thus she's now a perfect replica of herself, but permanent in the house. Therefore, when they are dying, they have to go to the house to die, so that they can be with Why? her. Yeah, forever. why don't they just shoot themselves in the head like when it, they're in the house right then and there? It's throwing out the complete opposite message. Why would they have to let you kill them? Yeah, they, they are there. they are killing themselves in the house because it's such a wonderful place. It's it's a little <laughs> bit fucked up. Like the show is like, oh, isn't it nice that they're killing themselves? It's like, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's horrible, and it's confusing it's like, because we spent the whole desperate. season establishing how horrible it is that the ghosts yeah. are here and what they're doing and yeah. what the house is. Now it's like, nah, you want that to happen. Standing around creepily, counteracts everything that Hugh was trying to say to Liv as well. About again, yeah, like children go. My disappointment is immeasurable. Like, <laughs> Well, it's not over yet. The if more it was, talk about it, the more the floodgate of yeah mm -hmm. is opened. What the fuck's with the bent neck lady exactly? Why? How does it work? She went back through time to look at herself and spook herself to get herself to eventually become the bent neck. Okay. Why was she yeah, doing that? Was the house it, it doing that? The it's the Terminator it. paradox as well. It's well, why was she trying to paradox. scare the shit out of herself? Well, this is the thing. Was it the house making her do it? Or was it her? She so clearly it's a has agency. Prophecy, then you know, like that's the problem. Is it meant to be a self-fulfilling prophecy? They have like a throwaway like line about how time is is not a line, but I don't know why they yeah, fucked time with time. What's it? Like that's mm. time, you know. Well, no. If if, if you time. want your universe to act in a different way, you're gonna have to explain it. But she has like one yeah. line to say, "Oh, it doesn't work the way you imagine it does." Moving on, it's like whoa, whoa, whoa. Now <laughs> I love the reveal in episode five, <laughs> but I. I don't think it makes any sense. It's not the only reference, like, right? Because the, the fact that, I guess, the dad showed Steve as a ghost uh, everything that happened on the night when he went back is an example of, I guess, how the ghosts can just live in whatever timeline they want and fuck around with it. I don't know. Yeah, that's an odd... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's the whole issue of the bent neck lady creates the bent neck lady. But yeah, yeah Nell shouldn't one. be happy to be in the house with mom, the mum because... She, well, she's like, not. She like, can't like, the fucking worst thing about it is like I feel like the actor playing Nell was like, yeah, but what? This is horrible though, because when you watch her last scene, when like the dad is going in with them, she looks horrified. She looks you, quite elated. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I, I would yeah, say what they're the going for she looked, is yeah. she's crying with happiness that the dad is finally with her, which to me is even more fucked up that she's yeah, like, oh, yeah. thank, it's thank like, fuck, I have the you. you love? Yeah. yeah. It's this is what I mean. It's very, about him. it's very complicated, and we haven't even gotten to the fact that like they do this happily ever after for every other character, which is yeah. oh no, yeah, she does smile, but like when he when he's walking up to her, she looks horrified. I just, Maybe she's oh, horrified I, of the I fact that he just that killed himself. Way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's also the fact that everyone like instantly just sort of fixes everything that's going wrong in their and life. What, what is what is the deal? Being, right? Like hope for the horizon kind of thing. Yeah. So like the mum ghost was she chilling out over his shoulder was that made up in his head or was she actually well like her? the fact that we, we in yeah. universe yeah. got the ghost yeah. to say to him that that wasn't me that was your head so oh. 
I didn't catch that. Like I said, I'm fine with the idea that a bunch of people died on premise and it, it, premises, and, and and it made it made an angry poltergeist type situation. Anywhere else, you know, why why don't people who are murdered in other places get these? Oh maybe well, they do. maybe in yeah, all like other this, places where there's a mass murder, this happens. This is a universe is, where maybe there are lots of ghosts and poltergeists all around yeah. different areas. You could again justify that it's not just death; it's it's violent and cruel death or something, as well as like yeah. other elements being involved, like the dreams all the characters have, where they're idealized, like this is what they want, and then it goes to shit, and then they get woken up by Nell. Like I liked all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I liked that we got our last dose of Shirley development, being that um, she's so hell-bent on being perfect, even at the expense of other people having to do things for her to get there, as well as herself. Like, she's she's just trying to build over um, a huge mistake she feels she's made. Um, mm. uh, like, her limits of stress and stuff, I, I think that's pretty cool. It explains a lot about yeah. how she behaves in every way. Mm. Um, I really like the dialogue when... Uh, the back and forth about how the ring wasn't a repellent, it was actually the key to it, because uh, they're the same. They both have as much to, to keep secret. I thought that was pretty good. I think that helps put her, like, le you know, with the rest of the... Yeah, the I think it was what was missing, was yeah. a, like a core flaw, or a more straightforward one. Well, yeah, because everybody else is so transparent, you know. And I like the... The, the whole Luke about to join them, and Nell's trying to stop him, which is great! Yeah. Up until she welcomes the fucking dad. <laughs> like, Luke, you can't die, but dad, hell yeah, fuck him. I suppose the argument would be like, dies. well, it's too late, the dad's dead already. It's like, uh, yeah, but it's not, it doesn't work. You can't have these two together. Also, what is the son, I guess the son goes back and tells all his siblings, so about dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he's actually gonna have to, why would they even believe him? Like, oh, he's... he killed himself so that we could leave. It's like, what? What? What do you mean? Oh, that doesn't make any. That's weird writing. What do you mean? The whole, the whole episode like, what, is really did weird. Did Nell have anything to say about all this? Also, the no. Dudley, the Dudley old makeup wasn't good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I just wonder if, if it's shit because it was rushed because it was an idea they had late game and that the Dudley's storyline wasn't this originally or something. I don't know. I have to wish and hope that there was a season 1 episode 10 script that was really good and that this is what we got because the director got a bit upset with how sad everything was. Why was it being sad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I doubt it would have explained the mechanics of the ghost. Well, if it was a tragic ending, as in everyone who stays in the house dies and the house is considered a fucking villain, I think we could headcanon most of it away no, for how things that, work. The fact that uh, the show almost treats it like what the ending is, you know, the dad staying in the house is good. I think that's what messes it up. Yeah. And I think we should have committed to the the mum wasn't the mum the whole time. There are no people in the house, it's all the house. It just uses it's, the dead yeah. as puppets. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the idea that like, the dead are conscious in there, but they're like they're being puppeted around by the house. Like it is them, but they're not in control. I'd be cool with doing that too. Um the I wanted to destroy the house to set them free or something. Screaming ghosts and like, you know, but like, Control you even have a chance for ghosts like to scare someone away, like, you know, when you have people just like, ghosts like appearing and scaring, like being scary, yeah. like punching his hat. You could that even have the dad thing. realizes the mum ghost in the house isn't the mum because of the fact that he's had the mum around him for so long, is his idealized version of her. So he knows her character like in and out, and he like recognizes along with the family that she's not her, and that everything yeah. in this house, you know. And the house sort of wins, doesn't it? If we had canon that, the house just manages to get him. That's the problem, man. As, as I think that was one yeah. of the first things that was said when we were sort of talking about this. The house kind of wins, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. No one was because it doesn't. The house wins, and that's a but it's gonna thing. eventually fall down <laughs> and just collapse into ruin. So what happens? It'll then? eventually fall down. Yeah. So then what does happen? And I guess the house has the power to suppress fires. You know. <laughs> so yes. What, what's to say that bulldozing would even work? Yeah. This house is infested with black mold, <laughs> and it's old, and it's just it's just got to go. We've got to level it. It's infested it's with dangerous. demons from hell. We should probably yeah, just you know holy water might be. A, it's a really disappointing ending to an amazing season. Season. Yeah, and I really hope the season two uh, at least has a strong ending. Doesn't have to be as good as this season as uh, uh, throughout the other episodes because the one better ending. It's a remake of the first one, but with a better ending. <laughs> All the episodes are the same except Ted. <laughs> so. Yeah, and you know, there's some stuff shuffled around for the new ending to make sense because it, it all needs to fit together. But other than that. If we ignore all of the, the actual narrative mechanics, the, the, the thing they're going for, I imagine, is that the ghosts represent 
all the, like the pain and trauma of, of different relationships and, and a lack of communication between people and the they, they focus heavily on like love is the is the good tism at the end while fear is is the thing we want to avoid when uh um, well, yeah the relating to family members. members. Fear keeps you away from like bad things and love like brings you towards good things. That's <laughs> that's how it works. That's what they're both for. Yeah, this is the thing. It's a very limited view of fear. It's, it's just like fear bad and like eh. survival mechanism. No, yeah. it's no actually. It's like fear fear is um is when fear is good actually. What if you like see like someone with a gun? And they're pointing it at you. Oh, that you was the thing. Fear. They described like, oh, fear. Oh, they describe both fear and love as irrational in the show, which is like, well, hang on. There's loads oh, of yeah, rational like fears. There's, there's a lot of very. I can fear a man with a gun things. because rationally he could kill me. <laughs> like, why? All right. But Mahler, if he's pointing the gun at you and he hasn't shot, then clearly that means he just wants to <laughs> you apprehend me. That's how it works. <laughs> and the whole like walls don't protect people. It's like, um. <laughs> um so that's demonstrably not fucking true. <laughs> like, why do we all live in houses? Like, come on. Wait, when do they say walls don't protect people? I thought that wall kept us both safe, but walls don't work that way. Walls never work that way. I would argue he's he's talking about emotional walls, but even still, I would argue uh, how emotional walls can be important or useful, depending on the situation. Yeah. If you're just completely open to everything that comes in and completely open to everything that goes out, like, oh man, what a mess of a person you're going to end up being. Yeah. The whole one kitten dies and then the rest of them dies. I think that might have been what originally happened in the season finale, and that's why the kittens were that way in, in episode two. The best you can do without that episode having happened and this one instead is saying that that's what was envisioned by the mother or some shit. She was hoping to kill them all, mm -hmm. which <laughs> I don't know. Um, I love the idea that it is, it is still made an the people who died, but their motivations are in some way changed by what they feel once they're dead. Mm. Nine incredible episodes horrible ending uh but still there's a so much good stuff in those first nine i mean yeah. you can there's a lot of good stuff feel episode 10 not being planned at all it's still one of my favorite tv shows of all time i just really hate that ending it oh, bugs yeah, the rest me is fantastic it's, I wonder if there's uh, like a, a fixed ending out there someone wrote. Well, the, the people have theorized like the ending is all a sham and it's all they're all in the red room and that's all the like all of them are thinking about what we saw as if that's what happened. I don't like that either. Well, no, that's that's you shouldn't like it because that's the fans trying to cop out. Yeah. They're just like, please let us have our tragic ending, please. Mm. I mean, I'm I guess that, that's better. Ending. I mean, it explains a lot of the shitty writing because <laughs> yeah. it's all in the head. That shot of them uh, celebrating two years clean for Luke, where they're all just really happy and together, I'm just like, oh, I don't know. That's I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be quite that strong. I want it's it, so corny. Yeah. The you can have good be, endings like, that are to, idyllic. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the road to a better future. I think is how you go with that. Like they are starting to bridges are starting to be like mended and yeah. relationships repaired. Not. Everything is now completely fine. Everyone is fine. I don't so, understand yeah. how you can be like watching like an ending where oh we I, we've killed off all the characters. This is too sad. I think I think it's a bit too much of a downer. Let's do and then they were all happy forever. Yeah, that's the right well, amount of adjustment. This is where the confusion comes in because it's like, what if they were like, oh we can't make it too happy. Let's have the dad die. And I'm like, but you sold that as a happy, not a sad. Yeah, like, I, it's all very it's weird. Good. Production elements of even the finale as well. Through the roof, everything is great. The actors really well chosen slash directed, and this is again why I'm excited for season two because we'd all be jumping into that brand new. Speculation will be through the roof. Six brains talking about how much autism <laughs> there may or may not be. I'm so cynical these days. I feel like Bly Manor will not be as good even with I... this finale. It's a lofty standard even with the finale. Like Luke, Luke's actor is coming back, and I'm like, oh my god, it's really hard to detach Luke from that guy right now. Uh. Yeah. So, you better be different. Because, yeah, the Please. actors can surely pull it off. It's just that I know them so well as these people. I am not Luke. I am Franklin. Hmm. I am Duke. Oh. <laughs> the Dudleys, like, I guess she's, like, sneaked out during the night when she was supposed to be asleep. Because I'm trying to think of, like, there had to be a good timeline for Abigail to get out. Uh, for them to not notice their daughter wasn't home, you know? So it had to have been late. Yeah. They do say, oh, she's so good at sneaking. And it's like, so that means she was real throughout the season, by the way, and that nobody ever caught Luke hanging out with her, ever. Not one single person. Yeah, that's uh, kind of... 
insane. Meh. Like I said, yeah. all of it is built in order to make it so the house was never destroyed, which to me is just like, oh, you could have done so much better than that. Why, right, why is they felt such a strong compulsion to have the house destroyed? Not destroyed, rather. So our characters could all return to it, which, by the way, I don't think was as good of a payoff as it could have been. Oh, yeah. Having them return there after all these years, after everything we've seen, should oh, be yeah. pretty huge. It's mainly yeah. they all go to the red room and chill, and it's like, eh. I don't like that she just boops them on the head, and they disappear, and they wake up in the red room. Yeah, I don't, again, mm -hmm. is she like, her oh, own thing? Okay. Is she yeah, the house? Uh, with the teleported thingy, they just all end up in there. So the first time that happens, I'm like, oh, you just want these characters someplace. That's the problem. The house is filled with all kinds of different ghosts and different <laughs> motivations and so you're just like what's the deal here is poppy a goodman now because it seems that the 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 hills of well not the hills the cranes have taken over the house as ghosts are they gonna make it a good house now you know when the next family move in <laughs> theoretically oh. all the ghosts are like we want to spook them and eat them and then and then Dal's like no don't do that no, why? Like, i don't even know why y'all did it to us like i'm, I'm kind of confused myself. well yeah this should be you a conversation explain. all the ghosts should sit down and be like so what is all this what are we doing you yeah. guys like is it staving off your you know entry into the netherworld or something is that how this works where's the coming of the spook comes do we get <laughs> some of our soul back after the because the house is eating it i don't know also did you make the daughter the first daughter of the dudleys are still born the fuck ghosts that's screwed up he says <laughs> did you kill nell's husband did i kill nell's husband? oh yeah that's another thing so theo brought up when oh, we right. covered the episode of first that, yeah. oh extremely bad luck that he had an aneurysm and it's like yeah that's what it was oh, unfortunately yeah. I, guess so. I think it would have been way better once again to make the house super evil and that's yep. some it's tough to write that in a way that makes sense but like I, it, it killed him you know like it was, I, it was trying to reach out this whole time and it finally got him because of the quality i gave a benefit of the doubt it's like okay yeah. that's unlucky i guess but it's probably the house fucking with them yeah that's something the obviously the bent net lady episode is way stronger when viewed on its own once you view it in mm -hmm. conjunction with episode 10 i think it gets way weaker i almost Her feel what? like telling people to like stop after episode 9. Ah, <laughs> i don't think you can gonna, you they ain't gonna do that yeah you, also, even i would be like please let me see the end even if it's bad i don't like the idea that the house just sort of kills people i feel like it really takes away from some agency characters can have where like if the house wants to kill you you're you're just dead and i that's see what you that. mean yeah. you know it's not like a you, you can't fight back against it in some way well, and i understand part of horror is helplessness but at the same time it's just like oh boop you're where i want you to be oh you're dead now the thing that a lot of writers want to do with a haunted house is that it's not as simple as it wants to kill you it wants to put you in the maximum position of fear and then kill you that's usually like the cop out that they try and make but this one's confusing if i'm being kind it looks as if it puts them in those dream positions and then it makes the dream positions so everything they want turn to absolute shit pushing them to their maximum fear and then striking at them to kill them as if that's the process of consuming them and up until that point it just spooks them on the mild set like throwing a big spooky tallman in your room going Ooh, and you're like ah if the explanation was that the ghosts once they die like have like an are just given like an overwhelming like urge for more company and so they try to tempt people in and like but they need to, they need to like they need to be in the red room or they won't become ghosts or whatever the fuck. So that's you how it works. Tie that in somatically you could, if you want to do that. And like when they reach out in any way, shape, or form, even audio or physical, it doesn't translate the same way. Like from their POV, yeah. they're trying, but from the persons, it's like spooky noises and weird occurrences. Maybe Hatman wasn't and even trying to spook anyone. He just believe that, that that's what Hatman. We want to create a show that gets us to justify a whole bunch of standard classic spooky scenes, right? That's how you do yeah. it. You have a narrative that's like, oh, this is mechanically totally how it works. And someone else is like, that's just stupid. And it's like, I don't care. That's how it works. And that's why it does these things. And this is what it leads to. And it's like, okay, cool. But this show doesn't really do that. It makes me really appreciate a story where it's just like, oh yeah, there's just there's a spooky demon, but it can only well, do these sorts of things. Yeah. It, it only has this amount of power, and so this is how it tries to use its limited amount of power to make spooky bad things happen. And you have to find a way to, to beat the demon at his own game or something like that. And I'm cool with um, it being nice and nice and simple. I don't need a whole season of backstory to explain why the ghosts work the way they do, but holy shit, just be consistent. It's so hard to understand otherwise. Yeah, because now I think that the people you're trying to tell me are good are villainous. Like I said, the wife is kind of ruined by the end of this. She's uh, yeah, horrifying. She's a monster. I do feel disappointed by um, the lack of involvement the, the Hills got. It's just like, oh yeah, they're well, yeah, so when season two was announced, everyone's theory was that it was going to be a season about the hills. It was their experiences in the house prior to this family coming in. And I was worried 
that if they fumbled that, it would make this season even worse. And they were like, it's completely disconnected. And I was like, well, that's good and bad. It's bad that we know fuck all about the family that came here they, before. They set them up so well. Like, the, the, this show is named for them. Ow. You see all their graves, and you know that they must be tied to this place. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, they're gone. And this is the thing, if someone was to argue, well, you know, we didn't have the time, I'd be like, we had the time. It was, it was, a, it was a lot of flashback space like, in some of these oh, episodes. I, oh, it, it should be fucking be that the ghosts, they only become ghosts if, like, they kill themselves whatever being in the red room is how it like penetrates into your mind and then gets you to kill yourself right up until the end we don't get confirmed died of any other means than suicide well yeah it's weird because they kind of avoid answering that question with everyone other than luke it's like luke sees you can have him use basically an od but also rat poison the others are just knocked out what is with the dad getting covered in black goo <laughs> he gets like oh, fridge. Yeah, that. It was just like, Whoa. and see, this yeah. is where I feel like episode ten was especially like, ah, we're a horror show. We can do whatever we want. It's like, yeah, yeah but that's that and Poppy yeah. touching people to make them go places, just like that. I'm like, oh, you're just you just want these characters to be either out of the picture for a moment or in a place when yeah. you want them to be. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, have we even talked Almost. about the black mold? I mean, yeah, so in-universe could just be a really vicious amount of black mold coming from an unsure situation exactly, or it's simply something that they all see. It's not necessarily there that represents the infection of the house, I don't really know. of corruption in some sense seems yeah. to be... As in just applauding the first nine episodes more, I guess. Yeah, I actually think that <laughs> yeah. they are through the roof good in every aspect oh, of yeah, filmmaking. Are. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a shame how it ended. I can see how it happened. <laughs> like, how they made it the way that it was made. It's a shame. And I think most fans wanted something a bit more true to what we've seen previously. Not necessarily entirely tragic and bleak, right? You can work with I, it. I, I was big hoping for because it felt to me like it was angling for the tragic but hopeful ending to clarify it sounds like we're advocating for the house to to win in that scenario and we, one of our criticisms yeah. was the house that wins it's not just that the house won in, in in reality it's that the show doesn't really know it did the show yeah. seems unaware yeah. that the house got its meals <laughs> so it's like yeah. hmm. it getting its meals is now a good thing yeah and the dudleys dying in the house the house is like woohoo more you know happy meal and and and, and then the show is like that isn't that wonderful everyone wins it's like what the f <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this results in more dead people. Mm hmm. Dying oh, man, that place tragic is, deaths. Yeah. That place is going to get crowded. <laughs> Everyone's killing themselves on the oh, property. It seems like it already is crowded. True. Really. They didn't do anything with the fucking statues. Those are horrible. What were you looking for for the statues exactly? Like they moved the one time and then nothing else. Oh, okay. I agree. I, I can agree with that. Um, obviously, as they stand, um, it's just arguably maybe unreliable narrative from the characters that the statues are moving and that it's a cool little effect. But if we wanted to make it more meaningful, which I am totally on board with, yeah, I'd be cool with that. That statues are the house and where it's looking at them, and we can put statues in many places. The house reacting and being able to, uh, like, stop stuff that's happened within earshot of a statue. Like, start like, let's say our characters have a conversation about something they want to try, right? But it's there's a statue there. Then the house is ready to counteract that, whatever they're trying. I don't know if I'd want to and go that far, because that ghosts, I'd start to question, like, how is it that the house only sees and hears through statues rather than just the house itself, you know? Yeah, I'd take the statues to be representative of its capability right. to know what's going on inside it, or just the fact that... Yeah, it fact not that the be-all and end-all. Yeah. I fully recommend it to everyone. I would just... Yeah. The sad part is because you guys went through the exact same thing that I and, and I imagine most people do, which is you get super high expectations for the ending, and so <laughs> this ending is like, damn. I was saying they're like, mostly entertained, and then I started frowning. <laughs> and then I started frowning more as I thought about it. Funnily enough, re-experiencing this episode, I was mostly fine right up until... I think it's like two-thirds in, when things start getting explained. I was like, oh no, yeah, yeah, no, no, I no, think, no, no. Uh, I think a lot of the, the character payoffs, you know, early on, they're, they're still pretty good. But yeah, uh, once it starts to talk about the actual house and how it works and everything... It's, That's when it starts to sort of crumble a bit. It's so important, especially in horror, that if you decide if you're gonna go and tip your hand like that, you need to be, you need to be airtight. You need to be fucking ready, because you're yeah. right at the end. Well, the ending you're... is what a lot of people remember, right? You know, yeah, like the ending is the biggest impression. Hill House, it was cool. I'm looking forward to season two, and well, that that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Garbage. Oh my god. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Hey, Theo. Oh, no, is it just me in the call? Come. 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 Hey, Mootle. No. Wow, I'm so alone.